WWE superstar Bianca Belair. Then we're going to switch gears from the ring to somewhere over the rainbow. Our third hour friends had a very inspiring conversation for Women's History Month with Judy Garland's granddaughter. So we'll have that for you. And later, we're celebrating the man, the myth, the legend, Christopher Walken. But first, here are today's pop start headlines. First up, our friends, this is great. Quest Love starts off pop start for all gr a great reason. Can't forget that following that infamous slapping incident at the Oscars on Sunday, Amir Thompson, a.k.a. Quest Love, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary, Summer of Soul, earning him his first Oscar and nomination. Quest celebrated by DJing at Beyonce and Jay-Z's Oscar party, then hopping on a plane late night back to NYC to make it back in time for Monday's Tonight Show wow. taping. Of course, wow. Quest Love there greeted by the staff, <laughs> filling the studio 6B uh, to celebrate his milestone achievement. And today we are sending him a huge congrats from all of us here in Studio 1A. Yeah. Very yes. cool. Uh -huh. Next up, Uncle Al, the proud family, louder and prouder. Last month, the hit animated series returned, continuing the next chapter of Penny Proud's hijinks and adventures. But what would a proud family reboot be without the master <laughs> of mischief himself, Mr. Al Roker? <laughs> We've got an exclusive sneak peek at Uncle Al's big return in this week's brand new episode. Uh-uh, here is a tip, Roker. Colored glasses don't make you look younger. <laughs> oh, very funny. I expect better from you, Penny. Especially after I helped you out. Helped me out? When? Oh, come on, you remember? That BB and Cece thing. Man, I wish you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. Consider it done. Hey, Penny. Anyway, I got a big promotion out of that. I'm working directly with the big guy downstairs. Don't you mean upstairs? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it almost it's, looks like what you're wearing oh right my now. Yeah. That is awesome. That is what he's like wearing right now. Well, there you go. Yeah, you planned that up perfectly. They, they, they do such a terrific job. I, there are kids or young adults who come up to me now and say, they didn't know I did the, tea, the, did the weather. Oh, yeah. they, they, <laughs> they just knew me from the Proud Family. <laughs> right. oh, that's so cool. Yeah. They, they, very oh. nice. Well, congrats. That looks fun. The next episode of The Proud Family, Loud and Prouder, starts streaming on Disney Plus tomorrow. So be sure and check that out. Next up, Taylor Swift. Cue this year's graduation theme, Swift Song 22. The Grammy-winning chart-topping superstar about to add yet another title to her name, Doctor of Fine Arts. On Monday, New York University announced that Swift's going to receive the honorary degree at this year's graduation, where she's also been named as one of the ceremony speakers after the pandemic postponed NYU's comm commencement for all the classes. 2020 and 2021, this year's ceremony will act as sort of a super graduation. Wow. They'll honor all three of those graduating classes, and the soon-to-be Dr. Swift, that's funny, will deliver her addre address at Yankee Stadium on May 18th. Wow. You know, there's, Congrats to there's the a course at NYU on Taylor Swift oh, that, has a, sure. wait, okay. yeah, that has a waiting list a mile long. People can't get what into it. What do they do it. in that? I don't know, but it's uh, really it's popular. So they write songs about oh, exploits. Cool. And if you get a bad oh. break, you just shake it off. All right, and now a little bit uh, a little bit more for you, hence the plus in Popstar Plus. A couple more headlines. First up, John Travolta, the beloved actor, turned out to be probably the biggest winner at the Academy Awards, and he wasn't even nominated. John and his son, Ben, left the show on Sunday night as the proud owners of a brand new puppy. Apparently, Little Mac and Cheese made an appearance at the show during Betty White's In Memoriam tribute, and Travolta connected with Jamie Lee Curtis backstage and walked away with a brand new addition to the family, Curtis calling the good news a perfect tribute to the late, great Betty White. That is one lucky dog. All right, next up, Keith Urban, the country music superstar, is channeling his inner pop diva on Monday. Urban sharing this amazing Adele cover. But I can't bring myself to swim when I am drowning in this silence, baby, let me go. There you go. In a post on Instagram, Keith called Adele's easy on me lyrics, quote, divinely timed. Not bad there. Finally, Tom Hanks, the Hollywood icon, is out in Pittsburgh. He's shooting his next movie. And while spending some time on the East Coast, you may have noticed that Tom Hanks has been pulling some double duty. That's right. He's working the wedding circuit. Last week, the award-winning actor crashed one bride's pre-ceremony photo shoot, leaving her with probably the best candid photos for her wedding album she could ever imagine. And now he's taking things one step further. Tom Hanks recently answering the call to a officiate a stranger's wedding. The bride, Chris Napasnik of Bellevue, Pennsylvania, knew Hanks was an ordained minister, reached out to him just to see if he would do the honors for her big day. And lo and behold, the big screen star came through. 
Wedding photographer Grace Ruiz told NBC News Hanks was so personable, funny, and kind during the entire wedding, calling it an unforgettable experience. It looks like if you're getting married and you find yourself in the Pittsburgh area, America's sweetheart Tom Hanks is available for all of your wedding needs. Those are your Pop Star Plus headlines. Coming up next, WWE superstar Bianca Belair sizes up the competition at this weekend's big WrestleMania. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And welcome back to Pop Star Plus. WWE superstar Bianca Belair bested Sasha Banks at last year's WrestleMania, the first black women to face each other in the night's main event. Well, Belair is going to be back in the ring this weekend for WrestleMania 38, and she spoke to us about how she's feeling ahead of her big match. WrestleMania 37, I was able to be a part of a very unprecedented moment. Sasha Banks and I, we became the first two black females to ever main event WrestleMania. You could see the emotion in both women's faces. To be a part of that moment uh, is everything to me. And to be a part of a moment where it was more than just being about me or being about Sasha Banks, it was more than just being about us. It was about inspiring the world, inspiring women, men, boys, girls. It doesn't matter, it transcends across across our race, religion, genders, it doesn't matter. It was able to touch everyone, and it's a moment that's going to go down and live in history forever. Back down, women's champion, Bianca Belair! You know, the response to Sasha Banks and I made him at WrestleMania, it was all positive. Even going into it, we had fans creating hashtags uh, for us to main event WrestleMania. So the fans wanted it. So to be able to give the fans what they wanted and be able to deliver and have people still talking about that match, knowing that that, that match was so much bigger than the both of us and it in affected people and impacted people in such a positive way. That's what this is all about. We also won an ESPY off of that match. So to be able to be recognized in the world of sports um, off of a match where I may even with, with Sasha Banks is everything. You know, coming off of WrestleMania uh, last year, main event with Sasha Banks, having our fans back for the first time since the pandemic had happened and walking out of SmackDown as champion, um, you know, I, I'm riding off of that going into WrestleMania 38. I'll be competing against Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship on April 2nd in Dallas, Texas. And, um, you know, I made history last year, so I'm just looking to go back to back at WrestleMania and uh, walk out as champion, but this time walk out as Raw Women's Champion this year. Becky Lynch came into SummerSlam and beat me in 26 seconds, and she took the title from me, and she's had that title ever since. Uh, she's Raw Women's Champion now, and we've been going back and forth. Um, you know, for me, this, this is my redemption story going into WrestleMania 38. I have yet to actually perform 
uh, in front of a full full WrestleMania crowd. So this will be the first year that I'm able to do that uh, in a title match with Becky Lynch. So uh, our fans are everything, and it's going to be really exciting to be uh, at WrestleMania in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. See, WrestleMania, um, it's amazing now because it's now for two nights. It'll be April 2nd and April 3rd. I'll be on April 2nd with Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. They'll be on as well going for the SmackDown Men's Championship. So the the night is going to be full of some crazy, amazing um, matches. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with, with Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. Things are really heating up with them. Um, they have they've had history. Ever, you know, they were they were a part of the very first main uh, main event of WrestleMania that that the women were a part of. So they have a lot of history there. Ronda Rousey with 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 her um, extensive background and, and Charlotte Flair with her being being the champion multiple times. She's the most decorated um, woman in WWE history. Uh, it's 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 going to be interesting. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. I think that it's going to be a brutal match. And said she's going to get hers here tonight at SummerSlam. Bianca Belair showed up. So I call myself the EST of WWE. That means that I am the strongest, the fastest, the roughest, the toughest, the quickest, the greatest, the best. Anything that good that ends in EST, that's what I am. And I'm all about just striving to be the absolute best B E S T version of myself my very first time with an entrance I honestly just didn't know what to do with my hands so this is where the, I do like a little bounce when I come out Bianca Belair took out uh, Selena Vega and Carmella last night teaching them a lesson after the assault from two weeks ago led by of course her opponent Sasha Banks during the contract signing and then my braid is just right there. And I just like to twirl and skip and bounce to the ring. So that's really how it all came about. It's just a huge part of who I am. It's a part of, um, of who Bianca Belair is. And it's right there. And I like to just have fun and bounce and skip to the ring. And, and I like to whip my hair up in the air. So it's, it's kind of just a part of who I am. And it just happened naturally. My braid is my superpower. And it, it definitely can be used as, as a weapon. But the key word is only when it's necessary. My number one rule is do not touch my hair. But if you do, I will use it. Becky Lynch going after the hair yet again. Got a continued strategy from Becky Lynch all throughout this match. Wow, man, go to oh, oh, my goodness. Times. The grief. The braid um, initially was just as a way for me to stand out. And one day I was in a match and you know, the, the girls, the first thing they always try to do is go to my hair and pull my hair. And I'm just like, how can I get them to stop touching my hair? And so one day in a match, I threw it at a girl. It made this huge loud noise. The crowd went crazy. And I was able to capitalize off of that in the ring. And in that moment I realized, whoa, this is this is definitely can definitely be used to my advantage and not my disadvantage. And big thanks to Bianca, and of course, more importantly, good luck this weekend. We should mention that you can catch WrestleMania from the WWE on Peacock. And just ahead, the legacy of Hollywood legend Judy Garland, but this time through the eyes of her granddaughter. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. To cover the news, you have to be in it. 
This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? And we're back here on Popstar Plus for Women's History Month. We're telling incredible stories of remarkable women through conversations with their granddaughters. Today's focus, the talented Judy Garland, who starred, of course, as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and her granddaughter told our Dylan Dreyer about the influence Miss Garland had on her life. We're back with our series, Generations Today, celebrating Women's History Month by sharing the stories of some legendary women as told by their grandchildren. It's such a fun way to learn more about these women. And this morning, we are taking a look back at a Hollywood icon. Judy Garland would have turned 100 this year. Her granddaughter, v Vanessa O'Neill, never had the chance to meet the legendary actress, but her grandmother's legacy lives on through her family. I'm in awe, even being her own granddaughter. I'm so impressed and blown away that this four foot 11 little woman has this humongous voice. Total, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Being Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz is her most legendary role, but for Judy Garland, being a grandmother may have been the role she most desired. Her excitement was seen on the Today Show back in 1967 as she sat with her two children, Lorna and Joe. Looking forward to being a grandmother? That's going to happen one of these can't days. Can't wait. Really? I can't wait. I'll let, I want her to have a baby immediately, and then she can see the baby for only 25 minutes, and I'll be a babysitter. Makes me tear up a little just hearing that, because obviously we didn't get to see her. In Vanessa O'Neill's home, Judy is known as Triple G, as she would now be a great grandma to Vanessa's two young sons. You're a great singer. To the world, Judy is an icon of Hollywood's golden era, starring in more than 31 films like A Star is Born, Easter Parade with Fred Astaire. Right, left, right, good. And Meet Me in St. Louis. She was also a Broadway legend and an acclaimed recording artist who was the first woman to win a Grammy for Album of the Year. It's really incredible how she paved the way for so many other women down the line. I always say that I have such strong women in my family who aren't afraid to speak up and be their most authentic self. And I know that that sometimes isn't probably easy, but I hope to pass that along to my kids. For Vanessa's family, Judy's ruby slippers are some big shoes to fill. When did it register with you that your grandmother was somebody truly special? I must have been about five or six, and my mom was performing in Vegas. And I saw, you know, like my grandma on top of the slot machines, like turning, <laughs> like a huge <laughs> bottle of her. Vanessa credits her mother, actress and singer Lorna Luft, with keeping her grandmother's memory alive. I watched my mom perform so much of my grandmother's music you know, live and sitting in the wings. Lorna. Lorna wrote about life with Judy in her memoir, Me and My Shadows, 1998, saying of Judy, everything I know about being a good mother to my children, I learned from her. What traits would you say have, have been passed down through the generations to you? I definitely think our sense of humor. <laughs> it's, it's a huge, huge part of our personality to make things fun and funny, but also to get through hard times. I like to laugh. I like to have a bag of popcorn, go on a roller coaster now and then. But behind the lights and stage, Judy was often troubled and struggled with addiction. Did your mom ever talk with you about the bad sides or the downsides that fortunately your grandmother went through? Not until I got a little bit like of age. I do have the addiction gene myself. I'm seven years sober. And I really do feel like it's a genetic trait in my family. Vanessa's grandmother suffered with her own condition in silence. 
Judy Garland died of a drug overdose in 1969 at the young age of 47. My grandma was living in a time where there really wasn't much help. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't AA and these programs and people didn't really know what, what addiction was. Vanessa bypassed show business altogether and today is a personal trainer and nutrition coach. The health and wellness industry has helped me so much, not only with my physical health and body image, but my mental health. 1,000%. Her home is in Southern California with her husband, Patrick, their five-year-old son, Logan, and a brand new baby boy, Kieran, who was just born somewhere under the rainbow. A sign, Vanessa says, that Judy was there. You could see behind the little bassinet that my son was in. Sure enough, just a big rainbow right there. And it really makes you feel like, hey, like you are sending me a sign. Thank you. That's amazing. Don't you get chills Incredible. seeing the rainbow? I have the chills right now. It doesn't oh. rain much in San Diego. To yes. get a rainbow is, is hard to do. Yeah. Um, the, the baby she just had two weeks ago um, is the fourth great-grandchild for Judy. Vanessa's brother, Jesse, also has two children. And, and by the way, um, you know, in that piece, you'll notice that Liza Minnelli is yep. her aunt. Yeah. And we actually just saw her on stage with Lady Gaga there um, at the Oscars. So the, the first time we've seen her in quite some time. So yes. this greatness runs in the family. Pretty cool. Still to come, we got a great throwback visit with Hollywood icon Christopher Walken next on Popstar Plus. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. nice. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. Welcome back, everybody. Christopher Walken turns 79 years young this week. The Deer Hunter, Catch Me If You Can, Hairspray. He's had so many memorable and great roles, and we'd like to share his visit here to today, back in 1992. In a career that now stretches over 30 years, Christopher Walken has earned a reputation as an actor who's good at being bad. An Oscar winner with over 100 stage and screen roles to his credit, He's cast as a villain once again this summer, a guy named Max Shrek, poised to oppose Batman in the season's biggest movie. Christopher Walken, good morning. Morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, Max Shrek, as opposed to Catwoman, as opposed to Penguin, is, is not a character with whom readers of Batman comics might be familiar. Who is the guy? Max Shrek is a, a, the name of the actor who played the, um, the vampire in the original Dracula movie, Nos Nosferatu. Nosferatu. And um, he's named after him, though it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with him. He's, he's a uh, businessman. He, he's the uh, owner and uh, CEO of Shrek's department store, which is the Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Alexander's of Gotham City. He's the, one of the last men on earth to wear spats on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> so. This is a very lavish production. Um, it, it, but essentially it is a cartoon. Did you approach it as serious drama or did you try to add a cartoon quality to Max Shrek? Odd as it may seem, Max. We're both perceived as monsters. In a show like this where 
There are wigs and costumes and big sets and special effects and so forth. Of course, it takes it out of a, uh, a kind of naturalistic uh, context. Frankly, I feel it's a bum rap. I'm a businessman. Tough, yes. Shrewd, okay. But that does not make me a monster. Don't embarrass yourself, Max. I know all about you. The feeling of being in it is much, uh, much more of, of theater, really, for me. I've worked a lot in the theater. Get the picture. What is that supposed to hypnotize me? No, just give you a splitting headache. Warner Brothers is, is hoping and, and betting that this film not only does box office, huge box office for the year, but rivals the, the greatest returns of all time. Um, what are your own expectations for? I, in my, I've, I've been doing it a long time and I try to avoid uh, expectations. Um, just hope for the best. My feeling about uh, um, acting in movies is that what I hope for is that the m movie that I just did is gonna get me another one. Mm. And, uh, Were you a fan of the first one? Yes, I did, I liked it a lot. I was noting when I got here that uh, that I was looking forward to this interview because I, I've admired your work a long time, and we were supposed to talk uh, uh, before another movie of yours, and it, it never materialized. I, I was um, your reputation is that you don't enjoy these kinds of things. Is it accurate? You mean interviews? Yeah. Well, it's it's uh, I, I am more comfortable uh, doing uh, other people's dialogue. And um, there's something about knowing your lines and knowing what you're thinking and having a character to play. Yeah. I don't think that's unusual for actors. Um, um, an actor is someone who, uh, who enjoys um, uh, uh, embodying another person, I suppose. Do you find it strange that people may be as fascinated with Christopher Walken as they might be with any character you play? I, the, I think the characters I play are probably more colorful than I am. I noted at the top that, that, that over the years you've, you've developed this, this aura of, of playing guys who are, if not evil, certainly slightly off-setter. Yeah. Um, is, is that something you've cultivated or has it just kind of happened that way? I think that movies are, are so expensive to make that it, it just makes sense from a producer's angle, a kind of marketplace way, that if you have demonstrated that you can do something uh, effectively, that you'll be asked to do it again. I think that's why that happens. And, and I'm lucky, really, to have uh, 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 any kind of ball rolling. If it's, if it's villains and twisted people, then fine, you know, so long as I'm working. It is nice to break it up sometimes and, and do... Um, to do different kinds of things. I'd like to do romantic things and um, uh, maybe a picture with a woman and jokes and happy ending and all that. A final note, um, it, it's also clear from your track record that you're a guy who quickly moves from one project to another, that you'll mm. do a movie, and if there's no movie to do, then you'll do a play. Yeah. Why do you work so much? Well, because uh, I really like uh, to work. And uh, for me, it's the best time that I have uh, Working is, is uh, the best time I have. When I'm not working, I'm always worrying about what's next and trying to get another thing. I'm on the phone trying to do things. Uh, I, I don't have hobbies. Uh, I don't like to travel much. As an actor, I get to travel uh, to fascinating places all over the world and actually get to live there. I lived in Venice uh, a year ago for three months. You don't get to do that on vacation. So when I have time off, I, I'm not inclined to get on a plane and go somewhere. I, I have a house in the country and I tend to stay there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, think about what to do next. Mm -hmm. As noted, I'm an admirer. Christopher Walken, thank you. Thanks. And a big happy early birthday to Mr. Christopher Walken. Thanks for being with us for another Pop Star Plus. Tomorrow, we've got the scoop on Starstruck on HBO Max. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.
year starting with a first look at a special exhibit right down our nation's capital. It's really cool. It's a groundbreaking and empowering installation at the Smithsonian honoring female power players in STEM. NBC senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson is there. Hey, Hallie, it's a big day in D.C. Hey, gang, it is so exciting. And let me just, can I blow your mind with a statistic here? If you look at the biggest cities in America, let's say the top 10, the top 12, guess how many statues of women are in those cities? Oh, Only about a half dozen. Well, guess what? That changes today. And boy, are they making up for lost time. Take a look at this. More than 80 statues here in the Smithsonian of real women, real incredible women in STEM. In just a second, we're going to do a live reveal of another statue. But first, take a look at how this all came to be. Consider the statues lining America's parks and city streets. What's missing? Women. When our families and our kids are walking around, looking at the people that are held up as role models, they're not seeing anyone that looks like them. And we knew we wanted to fix that problem. We're going to be 3D full body scanning you. Now, the If Then initiative to support and honor women in STEM has created the biggest collection of statues depicting women ever assembled. Good. Nice. This is gorgeous. 120 3D printed statues of real women, trailblazers in science, tech, math, and engineering, standing proudly at the Smithsonian in our nation's capital. I am part of a team of scientists trying to save endangered species from extinction. Women like Ray Wynn Grant, an ecologist and National Geographic explorer. It's all to inspire the next generation of STEM leaders. If we show little girls all these amazing women doing amazing work in this world, then each of them are going to know that they too can grow up and change the world. I wish I got to see this when I was a little kid. Reminds me of how important representation is. It's not just about my work, but about the work of everyone who looks like me. Talk to me, not the camera. Hi, uh, oh. we're, we're back and we are live here with some of the, by the way, incredible women whose statues are featured here in the garden. And we're about to reveal live one of the statues of Ray Wynn Grant, which we are so excited about. Ellen Stofan, I want to start with you. How much does this project mean to be able to do, to be able to have for people in Washington? Well, as a scientist myself, you know, at the Smithsonian, we tell stories of women from the past, all their great accomplishments, which is so important because girls need that inspiration. What I love about these statues, these are women behind us who are changing the world right now. And we're so proud to have them here at the Smithsonian to inspire the next generation of explorers and dreamers and scientists and engineers. One of those women, of course, is Ray, who's here. OK, so that is your statue. Yes, it is. You haven't actually seen it yet. Not yet. We're about to reveal it. But can you give me a sense of what's going through your mind at the moment? Because you are on the forefront, as are all of these amazing women who are here, of trying to inspire people like your daughter, Zuri. You know, even your mom, Tony, who's here with you today. You know, what comes to mind for me is is that we do this science to make the world a better place. And so it's amazing to also be honored and recognized and kind of be seen as heroes for doing that work. I think it's important for everyone to see. Have you felt that way your whole career or do you feel like you've come a little bit of a long way in the last couple of years? Oh my gosh. Well, I have to say that If Then Initiative here has really amplified women in science to make us visible and make us in the media and just really give us this amazing presence so that little girls everywhere can aspire to do something like this or at least know that they can. It's really made a big difference. Zuri, speaking of this, do you want to show us your mom's statue? Do you mind doing the big reveal for us? Yanking down that sheet and let's do it. Yes, I do. All right, let's get it. <laughs> Ready? All right, three, two, one. I mean, I can't believe she's real. You're wearing the, like, almost the exact same clothes. Almost the exact same clothes. That's right, because scientists wear all kinds of things. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Zuri, what do you think? This is your first time seeing your mom, right? Uh... In the statue form. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Buggy? <laughs> yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It looks really cool. Tony, how about for you? To see your daughter memorialized like this, I mean, people who you don't know, people from all over the country and all over the world come to the Smithsonian, and they'll be looking at your kid here. 
What an opportunity for all of us. For, I'm just grateful to the ancestors for bringing us here, and especially the scientific ancestors, <laughs> the engineers and the, uh, all the different scientists who created so many amazing, amazing structures underground and above ground that we are able to enjoy today. And so much of this, too, is about inspiring, as we say, the next generation, but inspiring people who, who will come to the Smithsonian, who will see, hey, women can do this, right? I mean, this is a movement in this country that people are moving towards. And women who are living today, and many of us are young women, right. and women who are going to be around doing science for decades and decades, and that's also really important. Got to tell you, you're looking good right there, Ray. <laughs> thank I mean, that's you. really something to see. And I, can I say, all of you, thank you for being here. You're all looking good. So give us a big cheer if you don't mind. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Can I say? check out this museum, Savannah and Hoda. This is so cool. So wow. it's a thrill to be with these incredible women. That wow. was really, cool. really inspiring. And this multi-generational awesomeness oh, right next God. to you. Really we, cool, Hallie. We can't handle it. Thank you, Hallie. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We are back with more of our International Women's Day celebration. Okay, Jenna, you've been so excited about this. A remarkable story. A Navy commander paving the way for other women. You all just wait. For more than 220 years, the USS Constitution's crew was led by men. But now, for the first time in naval history, a woman is at the helm. Commander Billy J. Farrell is stepping into history. A storied piece of American history, the USS Constitution is the Navy's oldest commissioned ship still at sea. First launched in 1797, this iconic warship is now navigating uncharted waters. Constitution's story is still being written. By making history with the first ever woman commander. I had to pinch myself a few times to say, is this really happening? And how lucky I am to be the 77th commander of USS Constitution. Commander Billy Farrell was just a young girl when she saw a Naval Academy graduation on TV and knew this is what she had to do. As that sixth grade girl, did you think, okay, yeah, this is something I can do. You know, I'm a, a woman. I can go into the Navy. Even watching that ceremony, I saw that there were women in the class. It wasn't a matter of if I could do it. It was just a matter of when. Serving 18 years in the Navy, Commander Farrell has worked her way up to this 224-year-old deck. You were here, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she's paving a way for others, including women serving under her command. It's very empowering as a woman to see that representation in a leadership position. Docked in Boston's Charlestown Navy Yard, the ship welcomes more than 350,000 visitors a year. I bet there's tourists, little girls who walk onto the ship and see you as the commander. I've definitely had some little girls come up and ask to give me a hug. It's very humbling. The Constitution is known as Old Ironsides because of the way cannonballs seemed to bounce off her during the War of 1812. I'm just in awe of the story that she has and you know the stories of our country and how it all ties together. Keeping that history alive, one of her cannons is still fired twice a day.
Does it feel like a dream come true? Every day. Every day when I come here and step on this ship and just feel the history that is here, it really is an awe-inspiring experience to be here. Okay, and now let's welcome Commander Billy Farrell to the stage. Da, da, da. <laughs> the TV, did you think like, I am going to break that glass ceiling? Oh, there's no way. There's no way I would have ever imagined that, you know, after 224 years, I would be the person that w was afforded the opportunity to be the first woman commander of USS Constitution. I want to know what it feels like when you put on this uniform. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's exactly. awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So I go to work normally in a 2022 20, uniform yeah. and then I get to put this on though. And it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling to get to show the heritage of the Navy and where we started. It. Well, you talked about what it felt like when you, little girls came up to you and wanted to hug you, but give us a little bit more on what that felt like in your position. It's just unbelievable to, to you know, especially in the Navy, usually we're very in the background. And so yeah. to, to be recognized and to have those little girls come up and say, thank you for what you do. It's just so special. Well, a vessel with such history and yeah. now yes. you are a part of that <laughs> history. Commander, thank you so much. Thank Can you we just so say much. on behalf of all of our daughters? Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Inspiration. How do you spend your free time? I'm either in the gym or I just hang out with my friends or watch TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, of course. TikTok. Eighth grader Jenica Lewis of Grimes, Iowa seems like a typical teenager. That is, until you ask her about college. Do you remember your first offer, your first college offer? Yeah, Iowa State. Iowa State. And what was the 18th offer? Minnesota. Minnesota. You must be pretty good. I'm all right. <laughs> At least those 18 offers haven't gone to her head. As one of the nation's most sought after ballers at just 14 years old. Here's the thing, you've got 18 offers now? You could have easily 50 plus offers. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. When she's not trying on college jerseys for size, Jenica's usually playing against girls a few years older than her, even occasionally showing up the boys on the court as well. She credits one boy in particular in helping her become a sharpshooter, her older brother, Trey. Do you remember when you realized, you know what? I'm actually pretty good at this. Yeah, that's when I used to do the same thing my brother did. <laughs> Their dad, LC, coached Trey and now coaches Jenica. She was always in the gym with us since so she was in diapers, but she's just got the mentality. She's a competitor. Anything he can do, I can do. That was her attitude. What do you make of what your daughter's done so far? It's surreal. Yeah, I mean, really it is. We knew she would be good. She always showed promise, you know, early, but not this early. Dad, how do you want this to play out? I mean, you've got 18 offers so far. She'll probably get a couple dozen more by the time she graduates from high school. You know, honestly, I want her just to play basketball. She's never been in this for the offers. She's never been in this for the attention. You know, she really, truly loves the sport of basketball. Jenica, what's the biggest lesson that your, your dad's taught you so far? Quantity over, right? Quantity, quantity, over. quantity over quantity. That. Quality over quantity. I like that, coach. Quantity of colleges aside, Jenica's already got an eye on the WNBA, where we found at least one player Who's got their eye on Jenica? Hey, Jenica, Jordan Canada here from the LA Sparks. Just wanted to tell you that I've seen your highlights and I watched your videos and read up on your story, and you have mad talent and so much skill. There's no doubt in my mind that you'll make it to the pros, and who knows, you might even become an LA Spark one day. So keep working hard. Looking forward to seeing you soon, and good luck. That's so cool. WNBA, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. I could see it. I'm going to save this tape. Dad, uh, how yes. proud are you of, of, of this little girl so far? You know, words can't really describe it. And honestly, it's not all about the basketball. 
that I'm proud about. Her off the court stuff, it, it makes me even more proud. She's probably gonna get tired of me telling this story, but after, after one of her, her middle school games, the opposing team had a couple girls on the team that um, wanted to take a picture with her. And I just kind of razzed her a little bit and just told her, I said, hey, if we're late to her AAU practice, you're gonna have to run. And she looked me dead in the face and said, I'll run. She's like, sure, they'll have this forever. You know, running's temporary. Already handling a little fame and the expectations that come with it, like a pro. Do you feel any pressure? Not really, no, because I'm basically just doing what I love and there's not really any pressure that comes to it. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Who mean Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. good. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Who mean Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Okay, if you've ever dreamt of starting your own business, this may be the story that will inspire you to get started. Donna is introducing us to a young woman who followed her passion for fashion, right Donna? Yeah, she sure did, but you know what, it took a moment because uh -huh. like most young adults, Jane Lou was afraid of disappointing mm -hmm. her parents, mm -hmm. but you know what she did, ladies? Mm. She followed her gut and created a booming business. Take a look. Welcome to Shopo, a fashion brand that prides itself on being playful and professional, just like the company culture. Shopo is an online fashion brand that we set out to be your go-to place to shop. We're all about inclusivity, body positivity, and just a lot of great fashion. The business is the brainchild of 35-year-old Jane Liu. Jane, along with her parents Queenie and Frank, immigrated from China to Australia when Jane was just eight years old. We were poor, they worked in factories, they worked as cleaners, leaving behind their corporate jobs so that they can give me this brighter future. After college, Jane worked at some well-known accounting firms, and while it made her parents proud, Jane absolutely hated it. I remember back then looking at my job and just thinking, I can't do another 40 years of this. So in 2010, she took a risk and joined a friend selling clothing at different pop-up stores. She liked it so much that she quit her corporate job, but kept it hidden from her parents, even though she lived with them. For six months, um, getting up early in the morning, putting on my suit every day, packing an empty laptop bag so I didn't have to actually carry a laptop. And I had to get the bus into the city with my mom because she also worked in the city. That was the start of the business. Yet that business was over almost as quickly as it began. I was devastated, I was embarrassed, and now I was broke. One month later, Jane maxed out her credit cards to create a second business called Showpony, which would eventually become Showpo. We even had three bricks and mortar stores. And I remember the moment that we decided we're gonna close all the stores and focus on online. 
That decision paid off, and so did her decision to advertise the brand on social media in 2011 at a time when few other retailers were doing the same. I couldn't afford traditional marketing methods. I'm just this, you know, girl just posting away on my social media, posting on Facebook before the days of Instagram, before the days of influencers. Um, and that's what helped grow the business. Was there a goal that you sort of set out to achieve that you thought to yourself, okay, once I get to this, then I've made it? I wanted to make um, more than my salary, which is I think $60,000 at the time. And then I would be able to just comfortably say to my parents, like, at least I'm doing what I love now. Shopo is on track to make $70 million in sales this year, and they ship their designs to over 100 different countries. Plus, her mom, Queenie, is a fan of the brand. My friend always, oh, Queenie, oh, you, you wear so beautiful. From your daughter? From your daughter? Yes, from my daughter's family. What is your biggest takeaway from everything you've experienced in what it means to become a successful entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur, you, you just gotta take some risks, you're gonna fail, but if you make a mistake now, you're actually saving yourself from a much bigger mistake later. And honestly, as human beings, we're all stubborn. Someone can't tell you something, you need to have made those mistakes. So it's just part of the journey. Fascinating story, right? And the oh. biggest part of it all mm. is that Jane actually paid off her parents' mortgage, bought her parents a car, and she, she said that that was the biggest thing she wanted to achieve ah. out of all of this. And it brings us full circle from earlier in the show, Hoda, you were talking about Don McLean, and it just, I think for a lot of these successful people, the biggest part is that family yes. moment, that family Don, time. I mean, and Don McLean, by the way, another thing you said was when he was younger, he risked everything to become a singer. He said, I didn't have health insurance, I just rolled with it because he said, I knew I was yeah. good. And when I, when I was watching it, yes, I thought, yeah. oh my God, she knew she was good. She risked it all. Yes. She maxed out her credit cards. And one other thing that I think is important, nobody talks about, she said that one um, piece of advice she wants to give to people who want to be entrepreneurs is stop overthinking. It's easy, it's logical, it's rational to convince yourself out of something. Yes. But just stop and be a little stubborn and have that drive. She's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. And I know I her parents it. are so proud. And she had that philosophy of once she makes a certain amount, yes. she'll leave her job. Yep. So uh, that reminds me of that. Uh, Bethany gave some advice. She said, if you're in a job you don't like, put 10% of your time, 10% of your money into your passion. Yeah. And up it each, every six yeah. months, so pretty soon you'll have enough to try out. You gotta have a plan, but yeah. it's nice to feel a little uh -huh. dry for it too. Yeah. And since it's Women's History Month, you guys, we are going to keep bringing you stories of inspiring mm. ladies we like Jane Lou all month long. I have Thank an idea. you. Let's do it beyond all month long. Yeah. yeah. I like I it. So I like it. We've been doing it all <laughs> yeah. year. Yeah. That's true. Right. And we'll be back <laughs> after this. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. prohibiting gender discrimination in any federally funded education or athletic mm -hmm. activity. That same year, 1972, a brave 11 year old girl from Hoboken, New Jersey, was busy waging her own battle, one that would forever change the playing field of Little League Baseball. 
when somebody would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always answer that I wanted to be a Yankee. As a girl growing up in Hoboken, New Jersey, Maria Pepe first started playing baseball to make new friends. We all had nicknames. It was Tippy and Louie and Juicy and Benji and Gigar and I was Pepe. No one, I don't think, even knew my first name. <laughs> but soon her name would be one they'd remember. In the summer of 1972, 11-year-old Maria Pepe showed up to this very field to try out for the Little League team. The coach saw her in the dugout. He came over and he said, are you going to sign up? And I looked at him and I'm like, well, you know, you know I'm a girl. He's like, wow, can you play? And I'm like, yeah, I can play. Not only could she play, she was a star, making the team a starting pitcher. But Little League Baseball had banned girls from playing in 1951, and word got around Maria was on the team. After her third game, her coach showed up to her apartment. Yeah, I mean, I think it was hard when Jimmy came to our home. And he wanted the uniform back. That was very hard. I got to keep my cap. Heartbroken, Maria's family, along with the National Organization for Women, took Little League Baseball to court for gender discrimination. More than two years later, they won in a landmark decision, which would open Little League to all girls. But by then, at 14 years old, Maria was too old to play. So yes, there is a, a heartbreak at a young age, but I do get to to play forever through all the girls that came after me. And so that's a blessing. That next season, 50 girls tried out for the Hoboken team. And since that time, it's estimated more than 5 million girls have played Little League Baseball. These girls, I tell you today, I'm so proud of them. That makes me happy. I could die tomorrow and know that I helped to open doors that cap she got to keep now hangs in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And as for that pitching arm, uh, I can still throw a ball. <laughs> and here they are. We have Maria Pepe here along with 12 members of the New York Wonders. Let's give them a round of applause. for not only all of these girls behind us, but for millions of girls all over this country. How does that feel? It feels amazing. I'm quite honored today. Uh, it's hard to not be emotional because I was so young um, when I was discriminated against because of my gender. And so I encourage the girls to believe in themselves and to never accept anyone saying you can't do something just because you're a girl. Um, I'm quite honored. I get to play forever through all the girls <laughs> that came after me. That's the best gift that anybody could ask for. That's your legacy. Maria, it must have been hard to take on that fight yeah. as a little girl in 1972. It was hard yeah. only because it really wasn't about just baseball. It was about what girls should and shouldn't do in life. And so there was a, a barrier that it was, seemed like, you know, it was very difficult to break through. I, I always believed I had the Lord on my side, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, so I've, I feel very blessed. Is that today. why you never? Because some people in your situation might have quit. They might have said, "You know what? The wall's too high. You know, I, I can't I, climb it." I could say I, I had a shield around me. Like uh, <laughs> I just knew I needed to continue and carry this. Um, I really love baseball, so I was not going to give up something that I love doing. Wow, well, we are so happy Maria. to give up a petite power. Thank house. you. Yes. <laughs> Look at these great girls and behind the New York Wonders. New York Wonders. Oh, yes. right.
sponsored by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we want to do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't wanna to develop too much gluten, but we also wanna make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. We're just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour, and we'll just keep mixing our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like. Okay, and now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough. Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I wanna get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two 
gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though, I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling, it is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys, how gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm, some freshly ground black pepper, and then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, a little drizzle of olive oil, gives the pasta gorgeous sheen, and there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce.
with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef. But this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo okay, Kev, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up, and look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it, but again, this is a no-mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then, I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I'm gonna set this over here. Now, 
I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now there's a lot of chicken flavor here. Ready, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. Just a little bit, just to create some steam. And also this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy and that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside, got the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery, what am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell of vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and then today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, this will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I wanna stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're gonna be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that 
are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I grew up on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne a la vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with a crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy, so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. 
Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out as well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky. And in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great. Look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in, and you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil, right in and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column, and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli, and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking down. Yeah. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Welcome to today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy salted water. So we're actually going to add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy red crumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious. 
I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media in influencer trends. I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, women-owned businesses. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. And in honor of Women's History Month, we are celebrating women-owned businesses and the ladies who built them. From cosmetics to jewelry, we even have bathing suits made for all body types. And later, a conversation with Nancy Twine, the woman who founded Buzzy Brand Briogeo Hair Care. And remember, see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. First, we have Fortune and Frame, a woman-owned business known for their wonderfully unique jewelry and accessories that are designed to hold fortunes, love notes to self, and special messages. So the original concept came about when designer Gretel Going got an insightful fortune from a fortune cookie and wanted to hold on to it. And she shoved it behind a refrigerator magnet and forgot about it. So when the fortune kept falling onto the kitchen floor, an idea was born. And Gretel didn't have a background in jewelry, but she took a leap and spent the next two years knocking on doors in Manhattan's jewelry district, hoping that someone would show her the ropes. And right when she was about to give up, she met her mentor, the wife of a jeweler, who took her under her wing and taught her everything she knew about making models, molds, and casting the pieces. And these designs became the brand's now iconic fortune lockets and frames. So here we have some of her best-selling pieces. So starting with the Secret Diary Book Locket. And look how beautiful these are. Also, we have the Fortune Locket and, of course, the Fortune Cookie Locket. And what is so amazing about these lockets is they open up to reveal these little beautiful special messages. And the cool thing is you can choose from over 600 different messages on the Fortune and Frame site or, and I love this, you can actually personalize your own message. I also think these make really, really special gifts and they come in these gorgeous little boxes. Next, let's talk beauty. Bossy Cosmetics was founded by a Boston-born and Nigeria-raised Aisha Dozier, a self-described lipstick junkie who says she never imagined starting a global beauty brand when she started her career as an investment banker over 20 years ago. After leaving her finance career, Aisha was diagnosed with severe hypertension and took a sabbatical at Stanford University and it was there that she realized that what really brought her happiness was mentoring women. So she committed to building a business that combined her passion for beauty and mentorship. And gosh, she's done just that. Bossy Cosmetics was created as a beauty brand that cares more about how women feel than anything else, with the intention to empower women to look, feel, and do good. And it all started with lipstick. Yes, Aisha says she defines lipstick as her love language. And she also calls lipstick a superpower that boosted her confidence throughout her career in a male-dominated profession. So today, we've got some of Bossy's best-selling products, starting with, you guessed it, a lipstick. So here we have the Power Woman Essentials Bullet Lipstick, and this is the number one bestseller for them. And the brand says they're infused with watermelon seed oil, and they give a really velvety, ultra-matte finish. Plus, they're also vegan and cruelty-free. Now, we also have another bestseller of theirs, the Power Woman Essentials Liquid Lipstick, and the brand says that these formulas are infused with vitamin E. And lastly, Bossy Cosmetics is not just about lipstick. Here we have one of their best-selling eyeshadow palettes, which also happens to be their first eyeshadow palette, and it has nine gorgeous colors. 
Now, if you've ever been intimidated by fake lashes or always wanted to try them, but have been worried that they might be too much for every day, then get ready for some good news. Jenna Lyons, the former creative director and president of J. Crew, and in my opinion, one of the most influential style arbiters of the past two decades, has reinvented the fake lash. Yes, Jenna is making waves once again with her launch of Love Scene, a collection of accessible fake lashes designed for women who are looking for something more natural-ish. That's her word, and I love it. Jenna saw a hole in the market for less dramatic fake lashes, and she says that she wanted to create lashes that would amplify one's own beauty and help people look like themselves only brighter. So she teamed up with makeup artist Troy Olivier and they went to work in true meticulous fashion. Love Scene offers eight different styles of cruelty-free and affordable lashes in different colors and you can also choose from different lengths and fullnesses and looks that take you from no makeup to a full bead of makeup. And the brand even says that each pair has been designed to work on every eye shape and skin tone and can be worn up to 10 times. So here we have Love Scene's starter kit. It comes with two sets of lashes, some of their favorite tried and true glue, and it also comes with this case, which I think is so chic. And because you can use the lashes up to 10 times, you can store them right in here. And here's an eyelash tool that they invented that helps you put on your eyelashes more easily. And lastly, meet Asutra, a women-founded and women-led company dedicated to creating products that help to promote active self-care. And I really love their motto, self-care isn't selfish. Asutra is owned by Stephanie Morimoto, who is the CEO, and Venus Williams. Yup, that Venus Williams, who is part owner and their chief brand officer. And the brand also says that they are passionate about the natural ingredients that they use in their products, like organic plants and minerals and essential oils. And they also say that their products are paraben and petroleum free. So we've got some of their most popular products here with us, starting with one of my absolute favorites that I have personally used. This is their Soak the Day Away Ultimate Relaxation Dead Sea Bath Salts. They've got a lavender and rosemary fragrance. They also have one with eucalyptus. And I've gotta tell you, when you use these, you just take a scoop, you put it in the bath, and it really does feel like a spa day right at home. Next, we have another product that really put the brand on the map, and these are the Natural Yoga Mat Cleaners, and you can choose from seven different essential oil blends, and these also smell just so fabulous. And lastly, we have two of their newer products. First, the Melt Body Butter. It is so luxurious, and the brand says that it has lavender and magnesium, and also we have another new product, and this is the Lavender Body Oil, and oils are such a big trend right now. So let's go through these products one more time, and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Fortune and Frame Jewelry, the Bossy Cosmetics Lipsticks and Palette, the Love Scene False Eyelashes, and the Asutra products. So that's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lohu has an inspiring conversation with the founder of Briogeo Hair Care, whose deep conditioning mask is sweeping social media. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Mark Honjovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget that QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Nancy Twine traded in her Wall Street career and created Briogeo Hair Care using her mother's beauty recipes. I love that. Hi, Nancy. So glad that you are here. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm actually in Utah right now for a ski weekend. Oh, nice. You have this amazing hair care brand called Briogeo. What inspired you to start it? Yeah, it's so funny. People ask me that because I'm not a hairstylist and I'm not a chemist. And actually, the inspiration comes from my mom, who was a physician and a chemist. And growing up, my mom used to make so many of our beauty and personal care products from scratch in the kitchen of our home. And I was essentially her sous chef. So at a very young age, I learned about the possibilities of taking clean, natural ingredients and transforming them into highly effective beauty products. Oh, that's beautiful. How do you see your mom's influence from that time in the kitchen sort of transferred to the products? Or is there any influence right now? There's so much influence. So the formulas that we create at Briogeo are a lot more complex. They're utilizing um, a lot more just advanced natural chemistry and ingredients that just weren't accessible to me and my mom when uh, we were doing this back in the day. But so many of the ingredients that have inspired the formulas are the same ingredients that we use at home in our formulas. So there's definitely a lot of inspiration from those childhood memories. Oh, I love that. I know mom has got to be so proud. I'm looking at your hair and it's so beautiful. So the person who uses Briagio, what is their hair story? So one of the things that makes Briagio Briogeo is so unique is that our hair care products are for all different hair textures and types. And one of the things that I really sought out to do when creating Briogeo was to really unite people through one hair care brand. And also, instead of using harsh chemicals or additives, we use clean, naturally powered ingredients that really bring out the healthiness and the shine and the, the beauty in your hair naturally. I love that all hair textures can use this product and it's all about the luster and the shine. I have to tell you, the name of the product line is so interesting to me. What was the inspiration behind Briogeo? Yes, so Briogeo is a unique word to our brand. It's not used anywhere else in the world, to my knowledge. <laughs> And the word briogeo is broken up into two different parts. So the word brio is actually an Italian word that means vibrant, colorful, full of life. And that really represents the passion and the, the essence of our brand that we really hope to inspire in every person. It's really all about 
celebrating what makes you unique. And the word geo is a Latin word that means of earth or of nature. And that speaks to our clean ingredient methodology. So Rio Geo really encompasses who we are from the inside out. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that explanation. You know what else I love? Following the brand on social media. They have a cult following. What's the number one product that you get the most feedback on? What do you think people love the most? So the number one product is this product here. I have it with me. Um, it's the Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. This is a holy grail. Like I said, I'm out here in Utah. It's really cold. And oftentimes the winter months can bring about a lot of dryness to the hair. And dryness is one of the biggest culprits to damage. And so this product is clinically proven to reduce breakage. It brings back the natural shine, luster of your hair. And not only does it help to repair breakage, it also helps to prevent future damage. And it's a really, really fantastic product. And I see you opening it up right yeah. now. And I'm so glad that you did because it has this incredible like texture mm. um, that almost looks like pudding. It's kind of like this pudding treatment for your hair. It has really concentrated natural oils, vitamins, and antioxidants that really restore the vitality of the hair. And this is our number one best-selling product. And it has been since we launched the brand back in 2013. I can see why. It feels so creamy. It feels like it's going to nourish my hair. And so how do you use it? Do you put like a shower cap on top of it? Do you put it when your hair is wet? How does it work? That's a great question. This is actually a weekly treatment and you use this in place of your conditioner when you use it. So after shampooing, you rinse out the shampoo, you wring the hair of excess water, and then you apply one to two walnut size amounts from root to tip or where you're experiencing the most damage. You leave it in for at least 10 minutes and then you rinse it out. But you brought up a really good idea because those that have very severe damage may want an even more intense um, mask experience. So you can actually apply it out of the shower, put a plastic cap over the hair to really lock in mm -hmm. that moisture and seal in the nutrients, and then you can wash it out an hour later. But you certainly can do that. Let me tell you something, my hair is heat damaged, so I'm always in search of products that will restore my hair to its original form. Okay, let's move on to the other product that you brought for us. This is also another favorite of yours. Tell me about it. Yeah, so this actually comes from another brand. It's a black owned brand, skincare line um, at Sephora. It's called Shawnee Darden. I had the pleasure of meeting Shawnee Darden. She's an esthetician and has been creating incredible products. And this here is the Retinol Reform Cream. And I've got to tell you, I've used retinols before and they tend to dry out my skin. What's so unique about this product is that it's so hydrating. So you get the benefits of retinol, which is really great for fine lines, wrinkles, um, any sort of blemishes over time. It really helps to fade them, but it also locks in the moisture. So I don't wake up the next morning with dry, flaky skin. My skin is actually hydrated. And this is like one of the only formulas of retinol that I found like this. Oh my God. Gosh, I mean, you see the difference in my hands, where I put the product and where I didn't. I can just imagine that on my face. Okay, thank you for putting me onto this. I love it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about your journey. I'm so intrigued by it because you started in finance and then you transition to being sort of your own boss. What was that transition like for you? Yeah, you know, it was um, it was a bit daunting, especially because I didn't have a start in beauty. I had never even worked in marketing. So, you know, so much of what I had to learn just came from my experience as a beauty consumer and trying to figure out what would I want? You know, if I was the Briochio client, how would I want to be marketed to? Um, you know, obviously there's such a diverse spectrum of hair textures out there. And as I mentioned before, Briogeo is for everyone. It's not just for me. It really is for everyone. So one of the things that I had to do very early on was to create a very diverse focus group to test the products to make sure that all hair textures and types really got great results with the formulas. But there was certainly a lot of trial and error um, during the early years. And as I've expanded the business, I've brought on um, employees and a really top notch management team that does have that industry experience to help me to continue to scale and grow the company. You can't just do it alone, right? It's good to have a team of people that can help you sort of pursue that dream. And one of the things that you're really passionate about is giving advice to entrepreneurs. You tell them to keep pushing through. How do you do that in your business journey? 
Yeah, it's such a great question. And so much of my ability to be able to do that has really just been focused on my own personal wellness practice, being able to make calm decisions, not out of haste, being able to kind of step back and process things. And then also realize that when you get bumped up against challenges, it doesn't mean that you should stop. It means that you just have to find a new way of doing things. So to me, my wellness practices of meditation and yoga have allowed me to kind of create a mindset that really has been able to fuel so much of my entrepreneurial journey. Balance is everything, Nancy, right? Sort of having those tools to help you be equipped with dealing with the challenges. Speaking of the challenges, what's the biggest no that you've received in your career and how did you bounce back from that? I remember early on, there was a big retail chain that I was exploring and I remember I didn't get the opportunity to retail because they felt like I didn't have enough brand awareness at the time. And I'm actually so glad that opportunity didn't work out for us because in retrospect, I realized that they actually weren't the right fit for the brand in terms of what they would really be able to bring to the table to support us. So in that moment, when I got that no from the retailer, it felt like doomsday, yeah. um, but I kept pressing on and looking back, it was actually a bit of a blessing in disguise. Oh, you know, when you get that no, when you're on the other side of it, you can understand why it needed to happen that way. But when you get that initial no, it is so crushing. So let's go back to being with your mom. What would you tell that little girl? I think that, you know, being open-minded about your career, but also leading with passion. Passion allows you to unlock so many opportunities and gifts and strengths within you that perhaps you didn't know even existed. So whether you go down the entrepreneurial journey or maybe you're working for a company, both are great opportunities, but just try to find something that you can root yourself in passion because that's where you're gonna find the most happiness and the most success. That's really good advice. I love your passion. Thank you for sharing it with us. Nancy, it was a pleasure chatting with you today. Enjoy your time in Utah, okay? Thank you so much. <laughs> you too, take care. All right, now let's run through the products one more time. The Briogeo Deep Conditioning Mask and the Shawnee Darden Retinol Reform. Up next, Adriana Brock continues celebrating Women's History Month with her editor's picks. She has more on the inspiring women who founded bathing suits and undergarments for all body types. Don't go away. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. right. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hi, welcome back to the show. We've been celebrating the women behind iconic brands we love and use. I have my own editor's picks that include everything from fashion to beauty, all founded with a purpose by women. And see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Let's get started. Lori Coulter and Reshma Chatteram Chamberlain only founded Somersault in 2017, but it has already made some serious waves in the world of swimwear. The brand used over 1.5 million measurements from a group of 10,000 women to create what we've dubbed universally flattering for all women. It's the swimsuit called the side stroke. And according to the brand, it's made with a fabric that provides compression support and coverage, which is just what we all need in a swimsuit to make us feel confident. Somersault also makes clothing items from swim cover-ups to dresses and loungewear. We've got the French Terry shirt and shorts, which are made for life away from the beach and pool. Reviewers love how versatile the pieces are. You can mix and match them. And from bathing suits to undergarments, Parade founder Cami Telez didn't feel as though the underwear models she saw in the mall growing up were truly representative of what real confidence and self-expression felt like. So she created her own brand to change the narrative. When the brand launched underwear was its main draw. Now Parade has become a buzzy destination for everything from briefs to boy shorts, bralettes, loungewear and bodysuits. All of the brand's fabrics are made with recycled materials. And two of the brand's best sellers are the Triangle Bralette and the Briefs, which according to the brand is made with the Replay fabric, which is a blend of recycled nylon and spandex. Now, this next product was created out of problem solving. Melissa Mash, Deepa Gandhi, and Jesse Dover launched Dagny Dover in 2013. The goal was to create problem solving bags for every kind of lifestyle. Today, the brand makes everything from weekender bags to pouches. We have the Dakota backpack, which is the perfect solution for everybody from busy parents to commuters and travelers. It is the perfect size to fit all of the essentials that you need, and it's made with a stretchable neoprene fabric so you can really pack it full. Most of Dagny Dover's bags are water resistant, according to the brand, and they're designed to stand up to whatever the day brings, with features like a laptop sleeve and a shoe bag. And in the beauty department, we talked to Nancy Twine of Briogeo earlier. The brand makes award-winning products that are free from sulfates, silicones, parabens, and other harmful chemicals that can damage hair and are made with naturally derived ingredients, according to the brand. The deep conditioning mask is made with hair-loving ingredients like rosehip oil and algae extract to repair damage and deliver on shine. And another one that our editors love from this brand is this Scalp Revival Drops. It is a treatment made to target dandruff, and it's formulated with tea tree oil and biotin. After one use, 91% of users in a study felt that their scalp was less itchy, according to the brand. Next up, Coco Kind founder Priscilla Sai couldn't find any products that helped treat her hormonal acne, so she created her own. She quit her job in Wall Street to launch Coco Kind in 2015. The brand launched with just five products hitting the shelves of Whole Foods, but the My Matcha Stick came later on and it has become one of the favorites. Our editors on the team love this little stick. It can be used to treat dry skin anywhere on your body, including under your eyes, on your hands, on your lips. It is made with just three ingredients, which is also really great. Coconut oil, beeswax, and organic matcha tea. And it smells so good. And lastly, this Brazilian beauty blogger Camila Coelho started her career by uploading makeup tutorials to YouTube in 2010. Today, she has her own fashion line, beauty line, and over 1 million YouTube subscribers. Ella Luz is her beauty line, officially launched in August of 2020 and has become a favorite of beauty lovers everywhere. The brand's beauty oil is a no-brainer for nourishing your skin year-round, according to the founder, who says she can be really picky about skincare products, which is why she launched it. It's super hydrating and lightweight and also packed with Brazilian superfood ingredients. 
The Shop Today team also really loves the oil-infused lip gloss from the brand. It comes in five different shades from neutral tones to a bold bright red that you're gonna wanna keep in your makeup bag all season long. And let's run through the products one more time. The items from Somersault, the Parade undergarments, the Dagny Dover backpack, Briogeo deep conditioning mask and scalp treatment, Coco Kine moisture stick, and the Ella Luz beauty oil and lip stain. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Tune in next week for another episode of Shop All Day. So I understand that this is the first time you guys have been together to actually do an interview for Bel Air. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is right. It. First time it's time together. It's our first dance. I Be hope prepared. we make it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and that's the thing, it's going to get very chaotic very, very quickly. I know. Because we never know what all our us. brains are connected in a weird way, so we keep finishing each other's sentences. It's, it's, it's amazing. It'll be fun. <laughs> you know, I, I, and watching you all get ready, there is such a camaraderie amongst this cast, which says to me that you are really great actors. Because in this show, at least the first three episodes I've seen, there's a lot of conflict going on here. Yeah. Is that, that, that I'm assuming is really great acting and writing. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I think the way we let the steam out of the show is that all we do is have fun and laugh. But really, isn't the show just about like a family and heart? And you know, in the midst of all that heart, you have some you know, yeah, conflict. Yeah, some conflict. And, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So sure. show of hands, who was who saw the Fresh Prince? Oh. Oh, wait, so hold on. Let me, let me finish the question. Oh, okay. It's like a game show. Don't hit the buzzer. Don't hit the buzzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're already out. Who amongst this cast saw the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when it first aired? Uh, oh, oh, I see the question. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah we, we, we old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too young for that. So, so what... When you heard that you were up for the fresh for the Bel Air oh. for Bel Air, and you saw the script, were you surprised? Let's start with you, sir. Um, well, for me, yeah. When I when I read the script, uh, I didn't think there was a part for me. To be honest, I I was uh, I I I, I love the material, and and I thought, oh, this is going to be great, and I'm definitely going to watch this. But then, I got a call for the role, and. I, I immediately connected with, with, with the scenes. And I just thought, you know what, let me just throw my hat in the ring and see what happens. Because I was just connected to the original Uncle Phil and, and, and just the, the physicality and, and you know, how he looked. Um, but then when I read the, the material, it was just the energy, the vibe, mm -hmm. the, the, it, it was just something that I could really connect with and relate to. And, and, and um, here we are. So this is just a very surreal uh, moment for me. But uh, it's like yeah. walking through like the, like the walking glass or something, you just touch and you're like, oh, and yeah. now you're on fifth. Yeah, and it's like, like Wait and, a minute. and it all happened so quickly. <laughs> it was like one day you're, you know, just at home chilling, the next day you're, you're like, you get the news that you're doing. you're playing Uncle Phil in in the the remix of of Bel Air. I call it a remix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remix would be right. Yeah. And, and Jabari, this is your first acting gig ever. Yeah, first ever. Acting gig. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, you know, my manager sent me the call, and then you know, I just auditioned for it. I knew I knew I was right for the part. Because, you know, people my whole life, they told me, like, you know, kind of have the mannerisms, you know what I mean? Just got in one little fight, my mom got scared. Unless you realize I'm the answer to this team's prayers, I want my number back from Philly, I right? When you're watching it, it looks as if he has been acting since he was two years old. He is yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah, that's yeah. Really true. He has such he an is. open spirit. He's very free. Yeah. <laughs> How, how does this feel hearing people say this about you? I mean, you? these guys are vets. I learn, I learn from them every day. Yo, that's sure, how we so. feel about you too. But yeah. for him to be like the guy, he is the nicest, like most down to earth person. But you know, we wait for next season. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. We might have to make it in the room. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 He's so nice. Okay, yeah. he's so sweet. <laughs> and, and, and Jimmy, the 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 role of Jeffrey is, uh, you know, nobody. 
wants a butler anymore. So how, yeah. how's your role changed? Yeah, I mean, when I spoke to Morgan, we both agreed like it wasn't about Jeffrey being a butler and it was really exciting to explore what does a house manager look like in 2022? And I think what really interested me is that Jeffrey and Philip, they go way back. Who are you? Jeffrey Thompson, house manager. You know, there's a sense of you get to know a lot about uh, Jeffrey's backstory and Philip's backstory, actually, in terms of their times in London. And so it's nice to play Jeffrey with a bit of swagger, but also mm -hmm. I, I, the original Jeffrey, Joseph Marcel, he's a friend of mine. So it's an honor to sort of, you know, be a part of that legacy. And um, yeah, I'm excited for people to see it. Yeah. And, and it's of the moment, obviously. It, it, it's today. It's 2022. So so Coco, your, your Hillary is is like this social media, Instagram, influencer. TikTok influencer. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that comes naturally for you? Well, I think in this day and age, you kind of have to get with the times and get with the social media platforms, you know, just to connect with your fans. So I don't feel like it was too far out of the box. I mean, I've had my fair share of like being transparent with my fans and telling my stories, whatnot on the internet. So I kind of just tapped into what I've already kind of built with my fan base that honest transparency and just really wanting people to connect with your lives because people mm -hmm. want to see authenticity. And I think that show, the show that we are on is super authentic. I'm going to be on Forbes. Why should I have to apologize for speaking my truth? Here we Yeah, it wasn't that hard to play an influencer. I feel like it's kind of a part of what she comes with the job. And, and did you, Akira, do you, is it, is this kind of like school every day for you and that you get to learn from these, these really great professionals who yeah, show you it how is. it's done? Yeah, I learned from I learned from a lot of um, from all of you guys actually. Um, you know, when we have those really hard scenes, I just honestly just watch them and <laughs> just learn little things. You know, <laughs> Hill. So I have this friend that I have a crush on, and I think this friend likes me, but hasn't said that. What do I do? This is not if if people are tuning in and they're oh it's a Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but even though it's called Bel Air, this is not that show. This is a different show. How so? I think uh, Cassie said it best. She said it uh, one day, and, and I took it with me. I ran with it. It's like the idea if you took all of the characters from The Fresh Prince, but you dove into each one of their journals, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like and you got to see uh, yeah, their yeah. diaries, right? Yeah, yeah. And you got to see like the, the inside life of these characters that we all know and love. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the drama that comes with that too, you know, because the, the stakes are high. Yeah. The situation, why Will's at, at actually in Bel Air, so uh, I think that's gonna be exciting for people. To yeah, see. it's true. It's almost like you go to a dinner party and you're like, tell me about your life. And you just tell people sort of like the surface comments about everyone. That's the sitcom. And so the drama is more like, yeah, well, you know, you can come have dinner at my house. Yeah. And then when people sit at the table, they're like, this is what these people yeah, are. Right. right. Like, Peel yeah. back the layers but more. And, th and this is, it's, it's, it's very gritty. I mean, it's, yeah. it is real life. This is not, you know, an 80s sitcom. This yeah. is a, a drama from today. Yeah, yeah. as Jabari said, it's, uh, you know, it's, the stakes are really high, you know, this, this, the matters are very serious. And, uh, you know, it's basically taking that iconic sitcom and dropping it in today's world and having to deal with all that we have to, mm -hmm. you know, deal with in, in, in this today's society. Yeah, you know? I mean, you think about a fight going down in Philly now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. I mean, it's not just... A, regular fight you know there's guns it's involved not, it's, it's not one little fight right exactly. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a big fight in the original you know that it's the the theme song and the, you know it's like maybe you know will was shoplifting or something right mm. this is like serious business yeah. in this well show. but that's the time we're in right like yeah. you make a mistake especially as a black man at the wrong time wrong place you know things escalate very fast yeah. and i think mm -hmm. that's what's beautiful about this show but i mean even though people keep saying it's so gritty to me, it has so much heart. Like, you really get to see what is a family if they mm -hmm. all come together. I keep thinking about the best currency you can have is just having a great family. It's mm -hmm. not about your bank account. And I really feel like you feel the heart of all those characters and why it's important that we all come together. Even mm -hmm. if somebody's not from the best side of town, they should still come to the best side of town to elevate and vice versa. He also comes and he grounds our family at the yeah. same time. So it's a fish out of water story, but it's also about what you do to seize an opportunity. Yeah, I, and I can add, I think it's, uh, it's basically, a, our show is a great balance of both sides of the coin, you know, showing the, um, you know, we've been exposed to so much, so much like traumatic porn where, you know, all we see is the negative, low vibrational 
outside of our culture. But this this show shows the successful family, the um, you know uh, thriving uh, family that's uh, high vibrational and, and mm -hmm. aspirational. And so it's good to have that balance. And I think that our show does a great job of showing that. I also, like family in the black community. You know, in terms of like you know, if you look at the banks, is the whole show is about what does the modern day family look like? You don't have to just be blood. You know, Jeffrey's not blood, but he's part of the family as well. And then, and also what I think the show is able to do is that if you watch the original or not, you're going to fall in love with our show and maybe want to go and watch, you know, Back the Fresh Prince yeah, of Bel-Air. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because they tag team each other for do sure. Do you need to have seen the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air to appreciate this show? No, that but it's delicious right. if you did. It, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's definitely yeah. things to be like, oh. See what they oh, yeah. doing. Our show, yeah, yeah. our show really complements the original sitcom mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. and uh, yeah, but you, you, it definitely sets on its own. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson now weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So, oh, dude, how you been? <laughs> you know, thriving. I hope uh, one day we can talk about why you're really here. Carlton, we all remember Carlton, the original Carlton. This is obviously a, a different Carlton. It's not, I mean, there's some aspects of that, but, you know, there, what's interesting about it, it, it deals with questions of race, it deals with questions of identity. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you've had to grapple with as you've come forward through this? I mean, I would say that, honestly, every, every aspirational black person has dealt with that on some level. This idea mm. that in pursuing education or in pursuing whatever it's like oh you talk white or you act white or um and and i think as a community we've never really asked ourselves like what are we saying when when we make comments like that what how does that affect people and in their development um and i think the really cool thing about what i've been able to explore in you know playing carlton is how does that affect a 16 year old kid who's trying to find his way in the world yeah and, you know, how does that affect how he sees himself and how he sees other black people? Um, and, and I think him, him meeting Will, he, he grows a lot through that. Mm -hmm. And he grows a lot through... He's through forced me. to grow. He's mm -hmm. forced to. But, mm -hmm. like, you know, in life, some of the ways we grow the most is when we're just kind of thrown into wild things. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I think it, it makes for some beautiful, beautiful television. Just Carlton's journey. If you want to do well, just keep your head down and follow my lead. How is it possible that Carlton is the coolest brother in this joint? I mean, I do kind of run the place. Hey! Carlton's charming when he wants to be. I know I haven't been the best self lately. That's just... an understatement. All work and no play. Puts you ahead of the class and helps you crush the competition? Believe it or not, Will, I want everything handed to me. You know, looking and seeing how far Carlton goes throughout the season mm -hmm. sort of brings tears to my eyes. Because in a way, he's kind of become a, a little brother to me. He's become a part of me. Um, and I, I see him as a different person. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm just, I'm really proud of how much, how much he changes. Is, is there just a part of you that's sad you can't do the Carlton? In 
What makes you think I don't do the concert? <laughs> oh. Oh. Well. <laughs> Tune in. Yeah, uh, uh, Adrian, you know, James Avery passed away yeah. uh, year, a few years ago. Um, I mean, it's such an iconic role. That, that, how does that impact how you approach it? Well, first of all, um, it is a huge honor to be playing this role that he, he played so beautifully. And it, it's, there's, you can't step into his shoes. It's, it's not possible. Um, I'm just uh, kind of creating my own, uh, you know, and in and, and this new adaptation. Bill Banks, Will's uncle. Thank you for your money, Phil. I only got 98 more problems to handle. Now you are the only black candidate that's running for district attorney. And I will stop at nothing, and I mean nothing, to serve the people. For me, it's a tribute to him. It's just a, our, our ability to say thank you, mm -hmm. our way of saying thank you to him and, and what he what he did for us. And um, I, I watch the show and repeat all the time, and I, I he's just so magnificent in, in, in what he did. He's a classically trained actor, and he made everybody on that set I mean, when you see the interviews, they all felt so uh, supported by him. He really was uh, a real support uh, for everyone on the show and, and just made everybody better. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's just such an amazing quality. And I'm, I'm just, again, just grateful to, yeah. to be able to, to play this part. It's just, you know, it's, again, it's so surreal. It's just crazy. I can crazy. only imagine. Yeah. yeah. Cassandra, in watching your, your Aunt Viv, uh, it, it's interesting in that she seems somewhat conflicted that you know she's this person who is here but there's still a part of her in west philadelphia mm. so what changed no mm -hmm. i adapted she's a black mom you don't f with black moms don't test us i struggled for my passion i was willing to sacrifice for her. it's bound to affect my campaign it's that that conflict that that she's got to deal with yeah i think she has a lot of conflict she has that conflict and also the conflict, what happens when you become a wife and a mother and you stop living your ambition and your dream and you decide to be a full-time mom or mm -hmm. a full-time support to your husband's dream. You know, I, I always say that I feel like the, the, the trip that Vivian goes through in this retelling versus the other is that you really see this woman with her husband and with her kids trying to let go of all of these cages that have been put on her, whether it's like, you know, I keep saying between capitalism and you could say white supremacy, you could say motherhood, just being a woman. And then in the midst of this show, this woman starts off as like, yeah, that's Aunt Viv. That would be the black lady in Bel Air. And then by the end of it, you're like, maybe we never really knew the potential of what this black woman could be if someone cut off all the ties that were holding her down. And so I, it was really fun just to explore like the, the expanded definition of who she could be. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's, Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break ground. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I like my Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I like my Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? So this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Ali Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What's the takeaway that you want the audience to come away with on this show? I, 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 everybody. You go. <laughs> I just want everybody to find something that they can relate to in each character. Cousin Will. Oh, is this really baby Ashley almost taking me out like that? How you been? Aside from global warming and the polarized political climate in this country, fantastic. I was going to say that I hope, as far as my character, Hillary, I hope that um, women that look like me are inspired just to see a dark skinned, beautiful girl being, you know, classy and having all these great fashionista looks and um, owning who she is in the midst of a lot of opportunities that would be great for her career because she is a boss, but um, they would cost a lot more than she's willing to give. Mm -hmm. So I hope that people see that journey because it reminds me a lot of mine yeah. being in this industry as long as I have been um, and see the tenacity of my character and you know, take that characteristic and apply it to their journeys, whatever they're trying mm -hmm. to accomplish in life. Hillary Banks, you have done it again. Fabulous. Hillary is an amazing cook. It's gonna take all cuisine by storm. My recipes, they are my culture. Yeah, for me, I would love people to see this show as a representation of, I suppose, the full spectrum of the black community, you know, in terms of we grow up and we have these shows that mean something to us and, and, and that we can sort of have a conversation with, with people and go, did you watch that episode last night? Did you grow up watching that? And I, I feel like this show has that potential and it can be that. And I think with Jeffrey, for me, being a, uh, a British guy, Again, it's about exploring. If you look at the original Jeffrey, uh, he's on one end of the spectrum. And I think uh, this Jeffrey, Jeffrey uh, Thompson, he's on the other end. And it's nice to play someone that represents the authentic uh, British black voice mm -hmm. now to a lot of my friends growing up. And uh, someone that's got a bit of swagger and intelligence that's also got a similar uh, relationship to Will in terms of street smart, but book smart. And now he's here in LA with his, one of his best friends, Philip. So Jeffrey, what are we going to do about Will? Will needs more than a few days to find his footing around here. Here we go. Hey, Jeffrey. Looking good as ever. I'm just trying to keep up with you. Hey, yo, Jeffrey got some game. Cheers. Cheers. You know what I love about this show? It's not just, like, one trope of a black person. Like, it's not mm. just the rich black folk. No, it's everything. You know, it's a full it's, spectrum it's of the, the black full, culture, the black totally, experience. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's like the A side is joy, the B exactly. side is pain mm. together. It's there, just so There's something for everyone. Yeah. Everyone can relate to it in some way. You know, this, uh, you know, exactly. It's both sides of the coin are represented very, very well. And this okay. show, <laughs> the music is really, seems really yeah. important. Yeah. 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 How important it's a character is the music? It is a character in the show as much as the characters are a character. Uh, it, tell, it helps tell the story and it really creates, you know, that the world that, that we're you in. You can feel and, the music in your chest. Feel it, yeah. These yeah. choices. It's, even it's, in, the, in the original viral trailer, yeah. when Will shows up to Bel Air, he's wearing a free Meek Mill yeah. Yeah. shirt. Yeah. And yeah. I love the, oh, yeah. yeah, he's wearing right. a free Meek right. Meek right. right. shirt. Free and like, I love that the trailer, like, he put you know, Meek, Meek in is it. so Philly. I don't know, yeah, I, yeah. Morgan Cooper. Explain, oh, yeah. <laughs> so for folks who don't know, explain the, ge the, the genesis of this show that came out of a, a reimagined trailer that, that Mr. Cooper came up with. Yeah, 2019, yeah. he put this trailer out and, um, you know, got like 7 million views. A gang wheel. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah, he made it with it was, his own money. This man said money. he was driving down the street one day yeah. and he goes under the overpass and he said like he had this Went astrological yeah. event is what he calls it, where he just had this flash just of like in. this entire concept of the show. And yep. then this man makes the thing out of his own pocket. And then I just heard, am I crazy? Then I heard when he released this trailer with his own money, he made sure he was in Los Angeles when he released it. So, like, and I think Will Smith called him up on the first day yeah. when it yeah. hit. Yeah. Will knew. called him when it was at only 10,000 yeah. views. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's like, he's such a manifesto. Well, yeah, Holden's really about is. the work, though. He's about the art. He's an artist. You know? he's so he was yeah. making that regardless. He's, he's mm. made loads of short films and he's done, you know, commercials. So when you look at that original trailer, you know, when I first saw it, I thought that was the show. Same. I was yeah. like, well, Same. I'm not going to get a role in that show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. This is yeah. nightmare. And I saw it, and I was like, I was like, this is genius. This is brilliant. I was like, wow. Yeah, of course this is going to work. But before I saw it, I was like, this is the most trash idea I've ever heard. <laughs> no, Did you 
Really? No, what? honestly, same. Oh, oh same. About that? Me and yeah, Ali no, both same, yeah. were yeah. like, why would someone redo yeah. The Fresh Prince? It's per it took me probably a year before I ever watched it, because I was like, there's no reason to watch it. Oh, see, mine, it didn't take me a year. I remember I, I had seen it on Twitter, and I was like, ah, that sounds dumb, whatever. And it kept coming up, and I was like, exactly fine, right. you twisted my arm, exactly. I'll watch it. And then I think I watched uh. it like three times in a row on repeat, and I just kept watching over and over, see, and I was like, me, I was so wrong. Uh, me, was so wrong. For me, it's the only way you could do it. You know, you, the only way you could do uh, Bel Air is make it as a drama. Uh, yeah. the, the original is, is so mm. iconic and so amazing. Can't touch it. Yeah. Up you got to leave that alone. It was lightning in a bottle. Is that, is that the reason, in a sense, because you couldn't possibly ever match what no. that genre Why would you? Yeah. Well, out, and, and, and the world's changed so much. The world now. has changed exactly so much, and I think that this story is so relevant and is so important uh, in this time right now. We need a positive. Uh, healthy story mm -hmm. for yeah. you know black story and I know, in order for a this truthful this is us with some swag you know? yeah. 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 yeah and like in, and in the show we're having like discussions on actual things that are going on right now right now so yeah. much of Will and Carlton's mm -hmm. conflict from the very beginning is just is 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 things that people people are arguing about on Twitter people are arguing about in person yeah. Right. Um, yeah and I think it's really really cool that as a show you know the showrunners have allowed the show to reflect the culture that it exists in today. And right. so we're providing a lot of answers for question, to, mm -hmm. to questions that people have out there right now. So. And, it's, and, and it's starting conversation, and that's the biggest thing, too, uh, just to yeah. have the conversation. Yeah. You know what, I mean? what happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're gonna be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. How much are, uh, on, on the set, you guys like singing a lot? Is there oh, a lot? Gosh, oh, yeah. 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 Want some right now? Yeah. yeah. We got a piano yeah. on set, too. Yeah. 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 But we ain't got a piano, but we can do this. Little yeah. acapella. Yeah. Acapella. Yeah. acapella. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I think you got to sing that. What do we got? Like, real time. How much money you got? A lot. There is a lot of things. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Honestly, we call her Cassie Freestyle on set because she always she busts it. I want Cassie Freestyle. Oh God. Okay, so come on. Say that. You want to do the freestyle? Wait, wait. We should do a freestyle. Okay. Oh my lord. Okay. Okay. She's gonna say okay, but I hold on to the thing. Okay. Turn my headphones up. Yo, we're here on the Today Show, that's for sure. We're hanging with my friends Al and Roka. Uh, I'm next to my friend Adrian Akira. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, so many laughs. Uh, never, hey, never seen a rap like this. Yeah, with the green dress and a fit. Yeah, long braid and she's swinging it. Hey! Yeah, yeah we killing it. Oh, hey. um, I can't freestyle. Uh, so I'm gonna do it me style. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, this is getting tough. All right, but it's not that rough. Okay, Jabari, sure. Jabari, I'm gonna pass it on. All on the you. Theory, the Take beat. it. Go for it. Who's oh. gonna do the beat for me? I'm gonna come do this and just do me. I don't do this for free. Oh. If you want me, then you gotta pay me. Oh. I bring the fire like Hades. Oh. Oh. Bring it back, bare last style. Yeah. You gon' use this and use it. Don't abuse it, you better just choose it. Oh. My man, oh. 
out. Hey, that's really my pal. About to freestyle. Uh, we go wild. 24 eyes. And we got the power, but we not on stars. What is happening, friends? Welcome to a Thursday edition of Popstar Plus. Coming up on the show today, a great visit for our My Happy Place series. This time, Melissa Joan Hart shows us all around her family's home in Nashville. Of course, you know Melissa from the 90s hits. Clarissa explains it all, and of course, Sabrina. And there's a lot of fun memorabilia, as you can imagine, in her home. So we'll have that coming up in a little bit. But first, let's check out today's pop star. First up, Bridgerton. First. Following news, the show has broken Netflix streaming records. Yet again, Netflix has announced plans to expand the Bridgerton universe. On Wednesday, the streaming service revealing a prequel series is in the works. The new show is set to focus on the life of young Queen Charlotte and her marriage to King George. Newcomer India Armartifio is going to, excuse me, I hope I got that right, will take on the role. But fans will recognize a few familiar faces. All three actresses currently playing Queen Charlotte, Lady Danbury, and Lady Bridgerton are set to reprise their characters. Executive producer and writer Shonda Rhimes is teasing fans on social media writing, prepare for the Queen's oh, return. Good. No good. word yet on when this series is set to premiere. Okay. All right, speaking of prequels, next up is Game of Thrones. Right. Cue the music. We've got details about the highly anticipated prequel series here. It's called House of Dragon. HBO announcing that the first episode is set to premiere August 21st. Uh, okay. So you're going to have to wait about four months before you dive back into Westeros. In the meantime, you can check out the sneak peek of the cast. The upcoming series is set 200 years before Game of Thrones and will center around the Civil War with the House of Targaryen. This marks the first spin-off series from Game of Thrones since the hit series wrapped in 2019. Next up, Katy Perry, the pop singer, is diving into old Hollywood for her next project. Perry is going to lend her voice to narrate a new podcast about the life and career of Elizabeth Taylor. The 10-part series called Elizabeth the First is going to explore Taylor's record-breaking Hollywood deal for the movie Cleopatra, her White Diamond's perfume empire, and the decision to go public about her battles with alcoholism and drug abuse. Katy Perry will also executive produce the series that is set to feature some of the uh, stories from people's closest to the Hollywood icon. There is no release date yet for that one. That's interesting. And next up, Eric Church, the country superstar, under fire after canceling an upcoming concert in San Antonio. The backlash comes after ticket holders for this Saturday's show received an email informing them that Eric Church is canceling so that instead he can watch the UNC Duke Final Four basketball game. What? Fans sharing oh, Church's on. message online that reads in part, this is the most selfish thing I've ever asked the choir to do, to give up your Saturday night plans with us so that I can have this moment with my family and sports community. Thanks for letting me go here and be a part of the Tar Heels. Fans sharing their frustrations online, calling the move not cool and embarrassing. Church has not announced any plans to reschedule the San Antonio I don't know how many show. tickets he's going to be selling in San Antonio if he does. Wow. That's, 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 that's a big game, though. Oh, it's a huge game. That's a big game. But it ain't that big. That's a big crowd. And by the way, a big crowd. Yeah, he can have a little show. phone on, uh, on stage and keep an eye right. on it. Right. Yeah, you can have the game player. on yeah. in a monitor. Come on. I'm with you. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Wow. Uh, and finally, we're calling our viewers to help us out with this last one. Today, we're going to launch our first ever pop star what? poll. Oh. It's a poll here, everybody. Oh. Don't get too excited. Is it a bracket? We, it's a poll. <laughs> okay. oh. There's bracket, right underneath bracket, excitement is yeah. poll. Okay. So we mentioned a little earlier this weekend that Bridgerton, they broke 
broke all the records on Netflix. Fans watching 193 million hours of the show in the first three days. We just want to know what's the popular opinion here. When a new show does come out, uh, do you is it better to binge the entire show all at once, or do you more or less like to take your time as to sort of savor it, maybe watch it a little more episodically? Yeah, I take my time. Yeah. I don't want to. Depends on the what, show. Depends on the kind, yeah. of, kind of show. I would too. like to vote for C, which is like maybe watch one or two, yes. but not binge watch the whole thing, but don't just watch well, one. We also don't. Is have there a I, I think binge is yeah. like two to six episodes all in yeah. one sitting. Uh -huh. That's a binge. You know, and then like maybe one or one or two would be just more episodic. I think three right? is a binge. Maybe three and three. more. Okay, like that's fair. One or two. That's fair. One or on two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's what I like. But if a series is suspenseful, yeah. sometimes I find myself at the end of one episode. You want to? Well, I'm watching Snowfall right now on FX. It's a great show, and like I watch it so fast that. I go through it and I'm bummed because it's gone. Exactly. It's like you eat your ice cream. This is like, a good oh, poll. Yeah. This is a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I like so it. We'll see how. Just go to today.com and let us know how you feel. We're going to re reveal those riveting results tomorrow. <laughs> Can't yeah. we can bracket person. the results. Yeah. And here's just a few more headlines for you. We'll start with Sean Mendez. Overnight, the pop star releasing his latest single, When You're Gone. And of course, with the new song comes a new music video. Take a peek. I don't want to know what it's like when you're gone for good. You're slipping through my fingertips. That is When You're Gone from Shawn Mendes. It's the first new release of this year. His last album, Wonder, by the way, debuted at number one on the Billboard in 2020. All right, and finally, Laura Dern. On Wednesday, the Oscar winner sat down with Ellen DeGeneres to chat about her big return to the Jurassic Park franchise, Dern revealing that onset technology has really come a long way since Steven Spielberg first introduced his dinosaur world 30 years ago. ILM designed computer-generated imagery that we hadn't seen in a movie before. So we had no idea what they were doing. I mean, we were staring at a X on a piece of paper in a tree. We had to look at the sound of a roar for the first time, the cast. It's one of the opening scenes of the movie. And they said, action. And just as we're supposed to respond to the dinosaur, everyone looked a different way because there was no sound. So we said, Stephen, can you please help us, we have to be able to look at the same time. He was like, oh, yeah, 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 I've got this, I've got this. Action. And over a megaphone, Stephen goes, roar! <laughs> and we were like, this is gonna be a disaster. <laughs> and we can't wait to see Laura reunite with Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic World Dominion. That is out later this year. And those are your Pop Start Plus headlines today. Coming up next, Melissa Joan Hart gives us a little tour of her beautiful home in Nashville. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. Melissa Joan Hart is the latest guest for our My Happy Place series, where we showcase stars where they're at their happiest, of course, their homes. And in the 90s, Melissa was the star of both Clarissa Explains It All and Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. She was nice enough to walk us through her family's home and even showed off some really cool memorabilia from her beloved projects. Hey, welcome to my house in Nashville. Come on in, I'll give you a little tour.
Hey, I'm Melissa Joan Hart, and we're at my home in Nashville, and this is my happy place. This is our fun little courtyard. My husband is very proud of the fountain right now because it's finally not overflowing. It usually splatters out, and he's been working very hard on a rock moss combination to keep the water in, but I just love this because it's a nice, pretty, like, just the sound of it is so relaxing, and it just it feels like a little Italian courtyard, which is fun because we got married in Italy. We love Italy. So come on in. So we fell in love with this house because it's really unique. <sighs> All right, so this is my home. There's church lights and church doors, but mixed with, like, modern light fixtures, and which kind of helps explain my obsession with like travel and experiences and like it just pulls all of it in and just feels very right to me. Uh, the pillars are from India. The ceiling is from a barn in Alabama. So if you look really high by the chandelier, you'll see a blue balloon. Someone brought us a balloon and it got loose and there's no way to get down from there. I'm not going up there. So this is the main kitchen table. This is where we spend almost all of our meals, unless we sit outside, really, or on a special occasion in my dining room. I am very strict about our house being as green and eco-friendly as possible, so you'll find real napkins on the table instead of paper, and you'll find us composting and things like that. So, um, But there is something I want to show you that um, has to do with my career. It's been 25 years since I've done some magic, so let's see if this works. Ready? <clears throat> Here we are in what I call my office, and it's mainly full of memorabilia of my years of work. Up here we have the side of a bus. I was on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And then I have my movie posters, God's Not Dead, and Drive Me Crazy, which were the two movies I starred in. Well, this is real convincing. I'm a walking punchline. But who gets the last laugh? See you after school, hun. For being on that movie for three months in Utah while also shooting Sabrina simultaneously in LA. I was in LA during the weekdays, I was in Utah on the weekends, and through night shoots. I didn't have a day off for 42 days, and on Sundays I wouldn't sleep, so I would go two days without sleeping except for on an airplane for two hours. And so that really holds a special place in my heart that I made it through that, worked with Adrian Grenier, like we worked really well together and had such fun, but at the same time I feel like we created something I was really proud of. And then here's a bunch of my magazine covers. 1999. These were kind of all from the same year, which is what's crazy. Like I did bikini, this photo shoot, and this photo shoot all at the same, and I think that around the same exact time. I was on Saturday Night Live uh, for a sketch with um, Billy Crystal, and this was the cover of the playbill I did when I did the play Imagining Brad, which kind of rolled into everything, starting with Clarissa. And here's my Northern Bathroom Tissue commercial. My face used to be on the cover of the toilet paper. I've been in this business for 41 years. I started when I was four doing television commercials. So this propeller back here was from an airplane that broke off during my very first directing of Sabrina. So it's signed by the whole crew. They signed it for me and gave it to me. This was made for me by the uh, art department on Clarissa. Here's my Wheel of Fortune, one million dollars, what? Um, the Golden Spatula, if you ever saw my show No Good Nick on Netflix, you'll know what the Golden Spatula is about. Uh, I got the bracelets from when I did Dance with the Stars. And then here, is part of my face from the Sabrina episode, the season finale. I think it was called I Fall to Pieces was the episode name. She turns into cement and then crumbles into pieces. And so I kept a piece of my face. So I think we already knew we were coming back for the next season. So we shot the scene side by side. So when I was on, on Melissa and Joey, I stole this bee. It sat on the desk. This is the actual card that, um, that Pat holds when you don't know what you got inside. This is my name tag. And uh, it's just the card he holds when you're playing the final round, and then when he opens it up, he finds out. Bran muffins. That's it. You got it. <laughs> oh no. Would your charity could they use one million dollars? <laughs> and I had Vanna and Pat sign it for me. So uh, this is a special little thing. This is this is my newest piece in the collection, and it goes right in the middle. So when you go to a set, you sit in your chair, it usually has your name on it or the character's name. So this is my collection of chair backs. Everything from, well, this is from my fake fiance. My character's name is Jennifer. I think that's what that's from. Sabrina, next to you used to be Drive Me Crazy is what that became. It was called Next to You. Nine Dead, that's from Clarissa. And then directing Watcher in the Woods and Wilson Joey. 
And we've got more with Melissa Joan Hart coming up, including a look at one very magical room. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. And we're back here on Popstar Plus, continuing our My Happy Place visit, this time with Melissa Joan Hart. And we're picking up with something pretty cool that her son has. I'll just tell you, it's an awesome bed loft. All right, so this is special. This is our quarantine project. Our family made this. My husband went to Home Depot, got a lot of wood, and we painted it, and we built our son a bed loft thing. He loves Godzilla and King Kong, as you can see by the drapery behind. And this is his new little hangout. We do a lot of reading up in the bed here, and so we actually kind of hide some of the books over here, if you can see on the shelf up here, so that we can reach them through the window. <laughs> so right now we're reading Shel Silverstein's um, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And so I can just grab it and climb in there and uh, read to him and then put it right back on the bookshelf out here. So it's kind of nice. And it's kind of nice in there because there's LED lights and glow-in-the-dark stars. We made it, made it pretty cush. So this area is the library. This bookshelf is so big. It doesn't just hold our books. It holds all of my memorabilia, which is a lot. Um, I have up here a wedding shelf. So this is my bouquet from my wedding. And then these are the cake toppers because we had a little mess up with our cake. So I ran to the museum and bought these little knickknacks and they sat on top of our cake. And then we have all kinds of fun stuff. Like here is a picture that hung on my, um, my childhood bathroom wall and me and my siblings fought over it, but I got it. I want it. Um, so this hung on our wall for many, many years and my brother just bought the chi our childhood house from my dad. So my brother let me have it. Mm -hmm. Although I have to make copies for everybody else. <laughs> And then each kid has their own shelf area it's with their little footstep and their little sonogram picture or ultrasound picture and their little julep cups. And here's my sugar collection. When I was little, I used to collect sugar packets from all over the world. <laughs> I like to collect everything from shot glasses to salt and pepper shakers to memorabilia from travels. And uh, this house gives me a place to really showcase it all. So there's like tapestries I bought in Italy and there's a whole shelf here just for travels. And then I've got my family shelf which includes a lot of my favorite pictures of my grandmother, who is very dear to me. So here's my grandma Joan and my uh, grandpa Stanley. So here they are. This is one of their first dates. And this is me with them when I was like one year old. Here's me with my grandparents, including my grandma Ethel, um, grandma Hart, when uh, I was getting my communion, making my communion. And here's a beautiful picture of my nanny Joan. So my middle name is Joan because of my grandma Joan. And I think that's why I I just travel, you know, I try to hit every place from Stonehenge to that um, hookah came from Bahrain and went over there for a USO tour and um, just so many memories of her traveling and it just made me want to travel. 
And then you can see that picture up there is of me on the set of Sabrina, and my little sister had just been born, Samantha, who's now like 26. And so that's a scene when I was Rapunzel, and I'm just holding her on set, and the set photographer happened to be there that day, and we captured that moment, so that was really nice. We've got things like statue here from Italy, one of my favorite statues, because I studied a little bit in Italy, and then we shot Sabrina Goes to Rome, because I really wanted to go back to Italy. And then I got married in Italy, so I have a real fascination with Italy. And then the kids' artwork I can just display here, which is so fun. They have all their books out here if they need to find something. So this is truly a library. <laughs> Still coming up, Melissa explains it all when it comes to the details behind her staircase and master bedroom. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? So this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Welcome back. We're in the middle of our My Happy Place trip to Nashville and the home of actress Melissa Joan Hart. She was nice enough to let us join her and take a walk through. We're going to pick up on the tour now. Uh, well, it's her home's rustic staircase. See what you think. <laughs> This staircase I love because our designer, Brandon White, did an amazing job on this because I just love that it's like white painted wood and, and this gray painted wood, but then it's like this rustic natural wood and then a sanded wood and then there's carpeting and there's tile and there's tile on the walls and there's beautiful light fixtures. It just kind of summarizes the whole house. All right, so we're heading towards the master bedroom. We have some special stuff here, just wedding photos and baby photos, but here is our Picasso gallery, so some of my Favorite Picassos are in this hallway. And then we're heading towards the bedroom. Come on in. So when I was about 23, I went to San Francisco to meet Shirley Temple, and that's where I made my first purchase of a Picasso. I had been doing the show Sabrina for a little while, and I really wanted something to display that would be worth more later on. And from there, it sort of spawned a collection of artwork. So whenever I get a big job or a new project, I buy myself a piece of art. Things like Rembrandt and Salvador Dali. Degas, and so I have some beautiful artwork on the wall that I'm very proud of. So, here's where the magic happens. Just kidding, don't tell my husband I said that. Above the bed is a paper mache, moon kissing the sun. It's from Venice, Italy. My husband and I were pregnant. We were on our anniversary trip in Italy, and we're running to the train. We're gonna be late, and I see this paper mache shop, and I see this sitting on the sidewalk, and I just had to have it. And so, because I knew I wanted to hang it above the nursery, so above the crib. So all three of my boys slept underneath, and then when they outgrew their crib, we got to inherit it above our bed. So there it is. Here is my treasure chest. This is some fun stuff. It, holds some of my jewelry and some of my favorite childhood things or special things. Like when you ask what would someone take out of their house in a fire, this is the thing I would take. This is a music box that my grandmother played for me and my sisters when we would sleep over in, at her house. And it is super special to me. My sister learned how to play this song for my wedding day. So I walked down the aisle to this song. But come on, we gotta see the closet. 
I do keep it this neat. I like to, I'm a very big purse person, not so much a shoe girl, love my purses. So one of the problems with this closet is it doesn't have enough room for all my cowboy boots that I got on my Mistletoe Montana movie. So I got to ride horses and I had to wear a ton of cowboy boots. I got to keep them so if I ride again, I don't know where to put them. So I have to make some space. But I also want to show you some special stuff. Here are some hats from Clarissa Explains It All. My girlfriend Michelle worked on Clarissa and as I was leaving Connecticut and moving here, she gave me these hats and said, these are from Clarissa. So I don't know if you recognize them, but here they are. And they get their own special little shelf. Funny story behind this heart necklace. My husband had sent me a uh, flowers for Valentine's Day when we weren't together and this came on the vase and it was kind of cheesy and so I just kind of stuck it in a jewelry box but my sister-in-law does the wardrobe on my movies and she found this heart and decided to put me in it for most of the movies. And then I want to show you guys something really cool when we bought the house. It was like this already but I love it. Look at my bathroom. It's so cool. Right? It's, it's, we call it the pink bathroom, obviously. We have Dolly. I did not realize what a powerhouse she is, so now I'm obsessed. So here she is, hanging above our throne. Over here is uh, a blue vase from my 40th birthday. So uh, I had this big dinner party. I had blue vases all the way down with white flowers coming out of the top. So yeah, was, I, I kept one. So I can always remember my 40th. And then we've got just some uh, really cool geode sink. I love some of the sinks in this house are really special and different. And uh, but yeah, this is, um, this is a good little place to come do your business. So this is my happy place. This is my dining room, probably the most feminine room I've ever had in my life. I have three boys and a husband, and so it's nice to finally have a space where I can have just something a little girlier. I love the little kind of modern touches mixed with the antique part of it. Um, the ceiling's really special. There's water outside. You know, I can unwind, just disappear. There's a, a giant Alphonse Mucha on the wall that my friend Soleil Moonfry gave me years ago for Christmas. I just thought it went so well in here. It's always hung in spare bedrooms before, but now I finally get to display it kind of in the center of the house. All right, so here's the kitchen. We've kind of got a two-parter. This is sort of the functioning catering kitchen, if you will. And then this is our pretty kitchen <laughs> with our beautiful gold sink. And I can't take credit for cooking anything. It's my husband. He likes to eat, so he has to cook. So I am constantly cleaning up, but he's the, he's the master chef, so that's not me. So when you see there a little towel here, hey, good looking, what you cooking? That's all about him, not me. So I feel like I'm constantly like doing dishes and cleaning things up, and I constantly try to keep this area clean and free. And this gold sink is kind of a killer too because it tarnishes very easily. So I'm constantly cleaning this thing. This is Cleo. This is our, our oldest girl, right? And we have a new boy that's living with us now named Sully. We name all, all of our dogs after Disney characters. So Cleo's after Pinocchio, right? Right, Nady? Yeah, yeah. She's such a good girl. You wanna go outside? Do you wanna go outside? Let's go outside, come on. So our outdoor spot here is awesome. Um, we spend a lot of time out here as a family. We like to eat out here. We do move around a lot. My husband and I, I'm from New York, but I lived in LA. He's from Alabama, we met in Kentucky. We lived in LA when we had our first two kids and we moved to Connecticut. We love Lake Tahoe and the mountains and the lake. And so we tried to live there for two years, but it wasn't exactly right for our family. So then we were like, well, let's try Nashville. So now we're in Nashville. We've been trying to find the right place for our family for years. The pool is awesome. It's the first time my kids have ever lived in a house with a pool. And we love to just come out here and relax and we hear the frogs and the birds and just enjoy outside so much. I think for me, a, a large part of sort of my continuing success is that I, I never wanted you know, I, I didn't have these these grandiose ideas of fame and, and riches and all that. I wanted um, a life. There's a lot out there that I'm still looking to do and, uh, and raise my boys. I've got a few more years with them in the house and that's what's gonna matter at the end. Thank you guys for visiting me in my Nashville home and seeing my happy place. <laughs> Say bye. Huge thanks to Melissa Joan Hart for showing us around her killer house in Nashville. By the way, Melissa's got a podcast filled with chats about everything that she finds hashtag binge worthy and you can find that wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for another fun-filled edition of Popstar Plus. Keep on coming back. Hang out with us. We appreciate it. Same time, same place tomorrow. Have a great day.
Well, hello. Look at them out there in today all day land. We're so happy you tuned into our digital show today in 30. This is the very last day of March. Oh my gosh, why is that so <laughs> shocking? All right, well, here's what's happening today for a third straight day. Yeah. Severe storms tore through the south, spawning destructive tornadoes. We're going to have a first-hand look at the damage. And Al is tracking today's ongoing weather up and down the East Coast. And then Chris Rock, he had his first comedy show since that infamous Oscar slap that happened. We're going to show you what the comedian had to say. And we're also going to hear from some other star comedians. They're standing up for their fellow performer. And then on this last day of Women's History Month, we're shining light on some great products from women-owned businesses. You will want to get your hands on these ASAP. Yeah, we're going to close things out with pasta master to the stars, Evan Funky. I love his name. He taught us how to make restaurant-quality pasta in the comfort of our own kitchen. That's all coming up on this Thursday edition of Today, Today in 30. 30. We'll start with NBC's Blaine Alexander, who joins us from Tallulah, Louisiana. Hey, Blaine, good morning. Well, Hoda, good morning to you. Normally, this building would have been filled with students at the time that the storms hit. Instead, officials decided to cancel class ahead of the storms, and it's a good thing they did. Take a look at this. This is where the roof used to be. If you walk over here with me, this is where the roof ended up, completely shattered down here on the ground. Now, officials here in Louisiana and areas across the south are working to clean up this morning as millions more remain in the storm's path. This morning, in the weather-worn south, another round of severe storms. Overnight, torrential rain soaked New Orleans' famous Bourbon Street, prompting flash flood warnings and sending tourists scrambling for cover. While powerful winds toppled trees around Louisiana, leaving crews rushing to clear the roadways. A similar scene in Mississippi. After a supercell thunderstorm hit Hattiesburg overnight, and in neighboring Alabama, the National Weather Service there warned of a large and extremely dangerous tornado as heavy rains flooded streets from city to city. Across the South, more than 100,000 people left without power. Now the storm continues its charge to the east, with nearly 57 million Americans still under the risk of severe weather from Florida to New York. The impact has been felt throughout the week. Earlier Wednesday in Jackson, Mississippi, tornado sirens sounding off as funnel clouds formed in the sky. That's it. That's a funnel. Just miles away, uprooted trees crashing into homes. The tree fell in my house, messed my washroom up, my house is flooding. In some areas, wind speeds reached 80 miles per hour. In Tallulah, Louisiana, this local high school caught the brunt of the storm, leaving classrooms crushed. We wrecked. While in Arkansas, a confirmed EF3 tornado near Springdale left a path of destruction, tearing down cell towers, ripping rooftops. I had no idea it'd be this bad. I couldn't even get out my front door. Officials there say at least seven people were injured, too, critically. One local elementary school releasing these photos of a damaged building. Classes are expected to resume today. And in that report, you heard the repeated reports of tornadoes. Today, officials now have the task of exactly taking stock of what exactly happened overnight. We know the National Weather Service is going to be surveying across Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, sifting through the damage to determine exactly what happened when these storms blew through. Hoda. All right, Blaine Alexander for us there in Tallulah. Blaine, thank you. Well, let's turn to Al now. He's mm -hmm. got more on those overnight tornadoes and also the ongoing threat of more severe weather. That's right. It, it now moves to the East Coast. So right now we are looking at tornado watches stretching Florida on into Georgia. We've got a tornado warning now just to the east of Panama City as this very potent line of thunderstorms makes its way east. 57 million people up and down the coast at risk for severe weather. We're watching two areas. First off, from now until this evening, Florida into South Carolina. Tornadoes possible. The highest risk will be the panhandle on into Georgia, damaging thunderstorms and wind gusts. And then late this afternoon into tonight, North Carolina to, do, to New York, brief thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail up to one inch with this system. System, and winds are going to be a big factor. 37 million people from the Great Lakes all the way down into Florida looking at wind gusts anywhere from 25 to 50 miles per hour as this system pushes through, causing big problems. Rainfall amounts here in the Northeast, there could be areas that see up to one inch per hour, so there could be some localized flash flooding. But the big jackpot numbers are down into the Southeast, Panhandle of Florida from Port St. Joe all the way down to Tampa and Orlando 
we're talking about anywhere from three to five inches of rain as this front stalls out. All right, we'll turn now to that stunning news out of Hollywood this morning. Bruce Willis stepping away from acting after a career spanning more than 40 years. Yeah, the Star's family making that announcement, revealing Bruce Willis has been diagnosed with a medical condition that affects his cognitive abilities. NBC Morning News Now anchor Joe Fryer has more. Hey, Joe, good morning. Good morning. Bruce Willis has been a household name since the 1980s and one of the industry's most bankable stars at the box office. But now his family confirms that Willis was diagnosed recently with aphasia, which can affect all aspects of language from speech to reading and writing. Known for his tough talking on screen persona, that iconic catchphrase, Bruce Willis is now stepping away from the spotlight. His family writes that he has recently been diagnosed with aphasia, which is impacting his cognitive abilities. As a result of this, and with much consideration, Bruce is stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him. Adding, as Bruce always says, live it up. And together, we plan to do just that. Willis got his break in the 80s on the small screen. Just remember, you're dressed like that for America. And I, for one, salute you. Salute you, Addison. Starring alongside Sybil Shepard in the primetime hit Moonlighting, okay. earning an Emmy and Golden Globe. At the time he opened up about his newfound fame in an interview here on Today. I never really uh, got into this business seeking fame and fortune. If anything, it makes me want to um, keep my private life more private. Willis later cemented his action star status as Detective John McClane in Die Hard, a role he'd reprise four more times. Welcome to the party, pal! The beloved actor has found success in a wide range of films, from Pulp Fiction to Sixth Sense and Armageddon. So if we don't get this job done, then everybody's gone. Willis has five daughters, two with current wife Emma Hemming and three with ex Demi Moore. The former It couple has remained close even after their divorce, with Moore even surprising Willis at his Comedy Central roast a few years ago. I just look at our marriage like the sixth sense. You were dead the whole time. <laughs> and no matter what, you will always be family. You've been a great friend, a great father, and easily one of my top three husbands. Earlier this month, Moore shared a photo with Willis as he celebrated his 67th birthday, writing, thankful for our blended family. You know, while Hollywood is mourning the loss of this actor on screen, that he has this support system behind the scenes uh, to really tackle this challenging time together as a family. According to the LA Times, some people who worked with Willis on recent films have noted the actor has shown signs of cognitive decline on sets and have expressed concern with his well-being. The LA Times quoted several sources as saying that Willis struggled to remember his dialogue and was even fed lines through an earpiece at one point. Back to you. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Well, joining us now is Dr. Gayatri Devi, a professor of neurology at Hofstra University. Dr. Devi, good morning to you. Good morning. We know you haven't treated Bruce Willis, mm -hmm. so but just, just generally, because a lot of folks are saying aphasia, not yeah. sure they've heard that. What What is aphasia? Aphasia is when you have trouble communicating with another person. You know, whether, you have, whether you're doing it through sign language, through writing, or through speaking, you're not able to communicate your thoughts or or be some in some cases be able to understand what someone else is telling you. Is it really obvious because we all kind of can't remember things? Is it something that you you listen to somebody and say, "Wow, there's something really wrong here"? Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes oh. you think, "Oh, is this person deaf? Can't yeah. they not hear you?" Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's much more apparent where you're clear that the person's really having trouble speaking, or they really aren't understanding what you're telling them. Oh. Now, there's a, a few different ways that this can come on. You could have a stroke. You could have a head trauma, it could be dementia, but does it, can it kind of come on slowly and then mm -hmm. progress and get worse over time? Yes. In some cases, depending on the cause, it can start slowly and progress, and sometimes it can happen abruptly. Mm. Sometimes you're talking to someone on the phone and suddenly you can't speak because you've had a stroke, wow. um, and that's a case where you have to go to the emergency room right away. Look, we've all been there where yeah. we can't remember yeah. a word. It happens to us on air, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> here yeah. and there. 
I can think yeah. of one yesterday, yeah. actually. Right. But is that something to worry about? Oh my gosh, right. could this be coming on? When do I need to see a doctor mm -hmm. like you? Right. So trouble finding words and trouble finding names is common for all of us, mm -hmm. and especially women as we go through menopause. Also, mm -hmm. it's a common symptom. Um, but it's when the problem persists, uh -huh. if it's interfering with our functioning, that's when you really need to seek help. Again, we know you haven't treated Bruce Willis, but can there be improvement? Are there things you can do if you have this that can you can get yourself back on track? Yes, you know you can do speech therapy, language therapy, those kinds of things can help depending on the cause. So sometimes mm -hmm. if you have a stroke, you can make a complete recovery sure. from a condition like aphasia. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Dr. Debbie, it's good to get this information from you. Thank you very Thanks, much. Dr. Debbie. Thanks for having me. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're back with Chris Rock's first public comments on being slapped by Will Smith at Sunday's Oscars. Yeah, Chanel's here with more on what the comedian had to say and what others are saying yes. come to his defense. Good morning. Good morning. Rock headlined two comedy shows in Boston last night, receiving standing ovations from the sold-out crowd. As for that Oscars moment, he addressed the controversy and promised he'll have even more to say in the future. Hey, Chris, you ready for tonight, Chris? Overnight, Chris Rock returning to the stage. <laughs> oh, wow. For the first time wow. since Will Smith slapped him at the Oscars, Rock keeping his sense of humor. How was your weekend? In audio obtained by Variety, Rock briefly talked with the sold out crowd last night. I'm still kind of processing what happened. Saying he wasn't really ready to talk about the incident. So Rock show was briefly interrupted by someone in the crowd, but overall the crowd rallied around Rock, starting with a long standing ovation, which Rock said made him misty eyed. And Rock's fellow comedians are rallying around him too. Rock's stand up set coming just hours after the Motion Picture Academy announced they've started disciplinary proceedings against Smith. It's On the Ellen DeGeneres show, Oscar co host Wanda Sykes questioning why Smith wasn't removed from the ceremony. And for them to let him stay in that room and enjoy the rest of the show and accept his award. I was like, how gross is this? This is just the wrong message. The Academy says Smith was asked to leave the ceremony and refused. Comedians David Spade and Dana Carvey speaking out on a podcast, saying watching the incident was triggering for them, reminding them of childhood bullying and condemned how Rock was seemingly left alone to handle the situation. It, it must have been tough for Chris to sit in the back and realize literally nothing happened. No one walked up, no security, no stop the show, no, it was just like, on with the show, this is it. Amy Schumer, who also co-hosted the show, weighing in too, writing in part in a since-deleted Instagram post, she is still triggered and traumatized. I love my friend Chris Rock and believe he handled it like a pro. The whole thing was so disturbing. 
Others now worried the incident could impact future performances. So it's a terrible precedent for comedy clubs? Yes. Like, are people going to yes. decide that they're going to go on stage and Ooh, smack the comedian now? In Boston, fans at Rock's show last night praising how he dealt with the incredibly difficult situation. So ridiculously wrong. I, I, I was proud of the way he handled it. Rock has four more shows in Boston this week, so the world will be watching. According to multiple reports, during his second show, Rock said he had not talked to anyone about what happened at the Oscars, presumably referring to Will Smith. As for Smith, he apologized to Rock in a social media post, and the Academy thanked Rock for his, quote, resilience in that moment. Yeah, I think it's, it's good that we're spotlighting Chris Rock's yes. resilience I so yeah. because I think all the focus has been on, on Will Smith. I think yeah. it's just taking some time yeah. for people to process it. Like yeah. he said, so more to come. Well, yeah. he didn't even have that time. He didn't yeah. have that time. Really yeah. just showed and give, given the fact that he's been, you know, he talked about being bullied. Right. And yes. Right. That's it. And yet he had the right response. Yes. In that moment, yes. and I think everybody is so impressed by what he's done and how yeah, he's how he's handled. It. It. I think he's going to also forward. figure out his take on this once he hits stage. Which yeah. way am I going to go with this? Because yeah. yeah. it's unearthing a lot of emotional stuff and being bullied in his past. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's talking about he was bullied up in his adulthood. Yeah. He was yeah. robbed yeah. at SNL when he worked at SNL. He was sucker yeah. punched and they took his. So this is a, opening up a lot of emotions yeah. for him. And, the idea yeah. that, and on the other side of the spectrum, it's hey, maybe we we'll take the high road. Yeah. Sure. Let's yeah. Yeah. By the way, you don't have to you don't have to respond immediately. Right. He's well within his right, take his time, yeah. figure Prius. it out, process it, Absolutely. and then deal with it yeah. on his terms yeah. and his terms. Boy, this thing yeah. is not going away. No. Every no. day no. there's something, something new. new. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Tough Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, some good stuff for you today. We are back with the first look at today's episode of our streaming show, Shop All Day. In honor of Women's History Month, the Shop Today team is celebrating women-owned businesses. That's right. Shop All Day contributor Jesse Post is here. You can scan the QR code or you could go old school. Text SHOP to 34318. Jesse, good to yes. see you. Good to see you. Good morning. And I'm just so excited about this episode because there's so many incredibly innovative and creative women mm -hmm. We have some fabulous businesses. Okay. Let's start with spring cleaning okay. for around the house. I'm fascinated by this. Yes. So this is an overachiever, Al. This is okay. a total multitasker. So it's called the Universal Multipurpose Cleaner. And it is plant-based. So it does oh. all the cleaning. It'll clean That's pretty much off. everything mm -hmm. without harsh chemicals. Can You've got to smell, smell it. it. Yes. I, I smell what I do first. that. Oh my gosh. So yeah, guess nice. who founded this company? Who founded Ooh. this company? Chris Jenner and really? Emma Greed. Yes, who you may know from Shark Tank season mm -hmm. 13. And she founded Skims with Kim Kardashian. Oh. Also good American, Khloe Kardashian. And this stuff will clean 
everything oh, from wow. marble, porcelain, hardwood floors, huh. and I'm more. Here for it. And it feels luxurious. I mean, for five dollars and ninety-eight cents. Five ninety-eight. Oh, yes, you yeah. feel okay. like oh, you know, an everyday task. And you're not it's inhaling like crazy fumes. No, you know it what I mean? smells so What's good. This? They're way into yeah. scents. Okay, so this is incredible. This is Moisture called stick? the My Matcha all over moisture stick. Okay. It is by a company called Coco Kind, and this was created by Priscilla Sai, and she quit her Wall Street job okay. because she was looking for a product that could help her hormonal acne, mm -hmm. and she just came up with this incredible so all over just moisture put it stick. Like that? Yes, it's a stick that will moisturize Moisture. anything on your body. Oh yeah. I mean, really anything from your lips to your face to your to your hands. Your feet and when you're wearing sandals. Guess what? Well, it's made with real matcha tea. You might want two versions. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to. Wait, it put smells that in like a nice place. cup of tea. It's so good, All and right. it's got caffeine in it, so it helps to be uh, depuff your eyes. Okay. So I love that. Well, you know, I love my lashes. Oh so yes, let's talk and about guess these. what? You know, a lot of women though are intimidated. I by know. Lashes, don't be intimidated. Right? It's so fun. It's so it's fun. fun. To me, it's and like a cape. Is it fun? Right. It yes. is. It feels fun. like a a cape. Right. Like you're like Superwoman. And and it really opens up your eyes. But uh, we've got a brand that is going to change women's conception right, of eyelashes. It's called Love seen by Jenna Lyons. You guys know her style guru. Mm -hmm. She was the president and uh, creative director, former of J. Crew. Oh, okay. So yes. she got together um, with Troy Olivier and they came up with lashes that redefine the entire Why? product because they are incredibly natural looking. These are, you know, for every day, not just big days. Mm -hmm. And check this out. This is their most um, sort of natural lash. They come in so many different kinds, different colors. So it goes on top of your lashes? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and I'll do it for you, but. These yeah. are game changers. They're so high quality, you can wear them up to 10 times. And what a chic little case, oh, right? Oh, that's cool, too. You can wear them oh. 10 times. Yes, 10 times. Oh, it's got its own little carry. Yeah. It does. Yes. It does. I know. And so that's right. redefining lashes. Right. Okay, so next up, we have two must-have. This is your favorite. Yes, leave-in hair product. Oh, uh, there you go. Yes, from Kristen S., who is a celebrity hairstylist okay. and influencer, 500 thousand followers and what they love is her you know perfectly undone oh i didn't work on Whimsical my hair curl. Yes. what's the difference between this and right this? well this is a leave in air dry curl mm -hmm. cream mm -hmm. so that means you can air dry run out the door and your hair still looks great don't you always air dry uh, no. hair oh no hair dryer oh hair dryer hair dryer okay. right yeah. and then this you is the curl defining yeah. cream so if you've got curls mm -hmm. right you just mine are done, mine are not mine are done with a wand but if you have real curls yes and the shop today team is obsessed with this product. Okay. It works so well and I mean so is the rest okay, of Okay, so of the last world. but not least. Okay. Tell this, me about is this like it's so funny. I saw this online. It's like the best selling yes. something. This is from Somersault and this is started by two women, Lori Coulter and Reshma uh, Shadaram Chamberlain. Okay. And this is called the Unicorn of Bathing Suits, the most universally flattering bathing suit ever. You know okay. why? Talk to me okay, about this. Okay, listen to what they did. The okay. brand says they went and they took 1.5 million measurements from okay. over a group of 10,000 women okay. to come up with this fit. So it is inclusive, and guess what? It has lots of uh, just suck it in. Yes, That's what lots you want. of uh, compression material, yes. and it's got that one shoulder. It's, like it's a so Spanx cute. Bathing suit. That is, but here's the thing: L, L, you need L Spanx, gets it. but you, otherwise, if you're not careful, it'll have spillage. Exactly. But they did so much As research. To <laughs> like you don't want. No, seriously. If you suck too much, you have stuff hanging out. What, excuse That's me. Right. So they thought of everything. Should no. Wow. I mean, this has to cross Yes. <laughs> Next time you I go on vacation, Puerto Rico. Right? Yeah, yeah, Puerto Can't Rico. Can't wait for the guy version. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> for more on these products, head to today.com slash shop all day. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Time to give yourself an entire body reset. Let's go. The new approach to saving our planet. Simple life swaps, great for the environment. This is quite the spring break crowd. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It is good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make pop tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Hallie Jackson Now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Okay, it is not often we have a pasta master in our kitchen, but today's our lucky day. Evan Funky, he's a California chef who just opened a new restaurant. It is so hot in L.A., it's hard to get a table, but it's called Mother Wolf. I feel like right. everybody's been writing yeah. about it. And this past weekend, he was serving cuisine to the biggest stars at the Vanity Fair viewing an after party at, on the mm. Oscar night. Like, we think... Did these people eat? And but yes, they were. They crushed. They crushed they it. Crushed. What did they love the most of your food? I think they ate the most pizza. You made pizza? Oh, yes. Did you fry Absolutely. anything or you don't do We fried squash blossoms. We fried arancini. We fried soupli. We fried meatballs. Come on. Okay, wait. I we just... made pasta. We... Come on. Let's... I just read something. Is this true? This is a five-ingredient pasta yeah. dish. That's it? It is. Simple. It okay. is. And so it depends on whose it? grandmother you're talking to. <laughs> Uh, the oh. recipe shifts. Okay. So this is a pasta, rigatoni okay. alla matriciana. It's from uh, the town of Amatrice, okay. which is in the Rieti region right. of Lazio. So we have some mm -hmm. cured pork gel here called guanciale. Mm -hmm. And we just want to slice mm -hmm. about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And then we want to cut tiles. Okay. That way we retain the crispness, ah. but it doesn't take forever to, to render. Okay. Exactly. Got it. So... We got that. We've got a hot pan here, and we're just going to start to render this slow, just okay. like you would bacon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just In fact, give I this thought it was bacon, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's better than bacon. Mm -hmm. It's all about the bacon. fat ratio, mm -hmm. fat to meat ratio. Mm -hmm. And you want a little bit of meat, but you want mostly fat. So we're going to allow that to render. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slide over here. Magic of television. Oh, we have some good re-render. Now. Here's the key for this pasta, okay? okay you want to drop this into the yes, water? We're going to cook that for about three minutes. So while we talk, Did you make that pasta? Uh, no, this is made in Brooklyn. Oh, this is yeah, fresh some, pasta. Some friends from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got some rendered guanciale here, and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. And here's the thing. The love ratio, the love <laughs> ratio, the love ratio for a pasta amatriciana is 50-50, okay? So Meaning. you want 50% pork fat and 50% Pomodoro. Is this, oh, is so, this right? So 50 it's about of right. That. Yes. Okay. So that's the love ratio. So this pasta should not be red. It should be rosé. Rosé. Mm, okay. Love it. So what we're going to do is, oh, that's all right. I got it. What we're going to do is we're just going to eyeball this. Let me okay? see. How you do? Stop. Whoa. Okay. That's Fizzle. about 50 percent. All right. And then we're just going to. Look how he does pasta. that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. And that's rosé. That's it. Yeah. So it's not red. It's rosé. Now, there's a couple of different iterations of this pasta dish. Some add onion, some add pepperoncino mm. and black pepper. But I'm a mm. purist. Just, just the like pomodoro okay. and the guanciale. Okay. Now what? And you can buy this at the grocery store, pomodoro. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So this is tomato passata. You can use canned okay. tomato puree if you can. Or uh, originally, when the tomato was introduced into Italy, it was just fresh tomato. Okay. So the basis, of the origin of this pasta actually comes from Grisciano, which uh -huh. is a neighboring community. Uh, and it's called pasta alla gricia, which is just guanciale. Mm. Black, uh, black pepper. Oh my God. It smells Pecorino. so good. So that's it. Now you just take the that's pasta it. and dump it in? Exactly. Wait, so what? Do you do it al dente Look at in that. there so it doesn't over? I do over... it very al dente. Okay. I'm a big fan of texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go straight in to the pasta. Go, Beautiful. Into the sauce. And we'll toss. Go Whoa. ahead and pass Look it behind me. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we need oh. is a little bit of Pecorino Romano. Look at that. Here, just to finish. Oh my mm. God. Oh my gosh. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I've made a few hundred thousand of these. This, this is mm. amazing. Isn't it so good? Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. It was simple. And it's just about the technique, mm. and that's it. Oh, my oh gosh. This is so good. No wonder why oh they crushed gosh. it at Vanity Fair. No wonder party. they called you the master pasta uh, chef. I'm a student, perpetual student. Mm. Well, that's, that's why, why I like so it. To make this recipe at home, you can go to today.com slash food. That was great. Everybody was saying so how good. good it was. No, I was like, how do they get it all in the 30 we minutes? We just do. Anyway, we get another big one tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be for the 1st of April. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.
sponsored by Walmart. What up, y'all? Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. Pasta is a staple for so many weeknight meals. It's easy to make, pretty hard to screw up, and oh so satisfying. I'm making pillowy soft ricotta gnocchi with peas and parm in a buttery sauce. And I'm cooking up a creamy chicken stroganoff with baby bella mushrooms. And I'm whipping up a spicy vegan pasta alla vodka. So start boiling some water. It's time to use that noodle. And let's get cooking. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor Walmart by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. I have to admit, pasta is one of my go-to comfort foods, so I am very excited to share this recipe with you. The first thing we want to do is take our gorgeous ricotta and actually lay it out in a thin layer on paper towels. Since the ricotta is the base of our dough, we need to remove some of that moisture so it ends up really nice and light and fluffy rather than dense. We are going to let this sit for about 12 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the paper towel absorbs that moisture, but lucky for me, I made one before. And here is how it ends up looking when it is done. Stunning. Okay, so now let's just make our dough. We have our ricotta right here. Plop it right on in. So we have two large eggs here. I'm going to crack them right into our bowl. One cup of finely grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some kosher salt, just to awaken the flavor. Before we add in our flour, we are going to delicately mix it all together. So it creates a really light, fluffy consistency. So now that this is looking really beautifully mixed together, that is when we know it is time to start adding in our flour. It's really important here to add your flour in a quarter cup at a time because we don't want to develop too much gluten, but we also want to make sure that our ricotta stays nice and fluffy. I'm just going to delicately mix it until there are no more big bits of flour, and we'll just keep mixing our final quarter cup. There we go, looking good. Now it is time to shape our gnocchi. And then we're going to take our dough mixture, kind of form it into a bit of a, it feels so good. It feels like a baby's bottom. Can we use that in the final cut? <laughs> it's what it feels like, okay. And now we're going to dust the top with a bit more flour. And this is my favorite tool whenever I'm making pasta, also whenever I'm cooking to easily pick things up. It is called a bench scraper. It's typically used for decorating cakes, making sure you have a nice smooth line of frosting around your cake, but it does such a good job of picking things up and it also does a great job of cutting things really evenly. And we are going to cut this into quarters. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to roll this out into a beautiful snake that is about one inch thick. It feels so nice, <laughs> so soft. I like to cut off the end first, just because this end, it doesn't look as nice. And then what I'll do is I will just keep cutting little one inch pieces of pasta. And look at that. They look like little pillows, don't they? Look at how beautiful this is looking. And what we're going to do is we'll take that same bench scraper that we have, lift them up, and transfer them to a parchment lined baking sheet. All right, and we're just going to repeat this with our remaining pieces of gnocchi dough. Looking good. Before we cook our gnocchi, I want to get started on the star of our sauce. This is a lemon butter sauce, so we are going to be using the zest and juice of two 
gorgeous lemons. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare lemon zest. So we're just going to take the peeler and run it along lengthwise on this lemon, pulling the zest off of the lemon. So I'm just gonna remove any of this extra pith. And the reason why I'm removing this pith is because the pith is a bit bitter and we don't want any of that bitterness. And as you can see, I've stacked up all of this lemon into cute little, almost soldiers, if you will. Take your knife and rock it back and forth along that peel. It smells amazing. And you can see how beautiful these strips are. And then what we'll do is we'll take these shreds and turn them, and then we will run our knife across again to mince that lemon. And it took me a while to master these skills, let me tell you. It really all comes down to practicing over and over and over again. It's really repetition here. And now I'm just gonna take my knife and run through this a few more times. It's smelling absolutely amazing. Look at that zest though, I mean, it's like freshly fallen snow. <laughs> okay, let's clean up, get our water a boiling, and finish up this gnocchi. Our water is boiling, it is time to cook our gnocchi and you gotta pay attention because this all happens pretty quickly. But I promise you, you have all of the tools to absolutely crush it. The first thing we wanna do is salt our water. I'm taking kosher salt. Okay, this is boiling beautifully and we can use our fingers to plop these in because let me tell you, they are light and pillowy and Dropping them all in at once is going to cause them to smush together. We want these to cook until they float to the top, okay? They basically tell us, they're like, hey, what's up? And then to save some time, we are actually going to take our frozen peas and we're gonna pop those in as well. So this pasta water is liquid gold. I call it unicorn juice whenever I'm cooking because all of the starch in the water itself is actually going to help bind our sauce together. And we're going to start adding in our cubed unsalted butter a couple tablespoons at a time. You really want it to be cold butter because our goal here is to really emulsify everything. Take a whisk. Start whisking everything up. The gnocchi's starting to float. And now we are ready to bring our sauce and our gnocchi together. I've actually turned off the heat. If it is too hot, it may cause your sauce to break. So just make sure you turn that heat off. Next up, we're going to add in half of our lemon zest. How good does this look? Okay, next up, we are going to slowly add in our parm. Keep on mixing it back and forth so that it melts in a nice, even fashion. It is smelling so good. And as you can see, it is really looking super glossy. Mm, and it is tasting delish. So add in the lemon juice a little bit at a time. Again, we want to emulsify this in. We don't want to freak out the gorgeous sauce that we just worked so hard to build. It is coating all of those beautiful pillows of gnocchi. And now it is time to plate it up. Oh my gosh, you guys, how gorgeous does this look? Okay, a little extra parm, some freshly ground black pepper, and then I'll take a little bit of fresh mint, a little drizzle of olive oil, gives the pasta gorgeous sheen, and there you go, homemade ricotta gnocchi in a lemon butter sauce. 
with peas and mint. I'm so excited to try this. It is melting in my mouth. The parm adds the perfect amount of nuttiness and saltiness. I don't have any other words to say except I know you're gonna love this. Mm. So good. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Can you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's good to have you with us. So delighted we're together. We're together. I make Pop-Tarts. Yeah, see? <laughs> so this show is for you, my friend. We got a huge, beautiful crowd. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. When you hear stroganoff, you're probably thinking beef. But this creamy comfort food pairs incredibly well with chicken. But the best part about this dish is that it all comes together in one pot. Less mess is always a win in my kitchen. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dry rub. I like to use a little bit of smoked paprika. You can use the regular paprika too, but I think smoke flavors just bring a lot more body to your recipes. And then a little bit of dry thyme, and then a little bit of garlic powder. Give that a good swish. All right, now let's move on to our chicken breast. Now I've just got some lean, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm not sure about you, but I like to cut mine up into smaller pieces. The reason why, it's gonna cook a lot faster. All right, y'all, let's add this to our bowl. Get your hands all up in there. Don't be scared to get your hands dirty. I'm gonna just rinse off the cutting board and wash our knife so we can prep the mushrooms. Okay, now I'm gonna be using some Baby Bella mushrooms. I think they're super delicious. I'm just gonna slice this into small slices just like this. So I've got a ton of mushrooms here and you're probably thinking, yo, okay, that's not gonna fit in my pan. Don't worry, mushrooms are kinda like spinach. Once you start cooking them and add some heat to them, they shrivel up really, really small. So they will fit, I promise you that. Our mushrooms are cut up. I'm gonna set these aside. And now we're gonna fire up our pan and get cooking. All right, we're gonna place this on a medium high heat. Okay, with it nice and hot, in goes the oil. This is a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of heart health, a little sprinkle of that. Then I like to grab some tongs and in goes our chicken. Ooh, I love that sizzle sound. We want a nice sear, a nice color on the chicken. There we go. You're gonna wanna cook this for about four to five minutes on each side, and then look at this. Oh, just lift it up. And look at that beautiful color on the chicken. Move it around a little bit. If you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and toss it. But again, this is a no mess recipe, so <laughs> the least amount of mess you can make in your kitchen, the better. This chicken is just about ready. I'm gonna move my mushrooms a little bit closer. And then, I'm gonna use my tongs. I'm gonna start taking out the pieces of chicken. Oh my God, look at that. It's just looking so good. Kev, you did that. If you're not your best cheerleader in the kitchen, I don't know what you're doing. You gotta just give yourself a pat on the back. It smells so good, it looks so good. Exactly what we want. I'm gonna set this over here. Now, 
I'm gonna add in the mushrooms now. Now there's a lot of chicken flavor here. Ready, so we want that. Oh, we've got a good sear here. I'm just gonna wilt them just a little bit by using a little bit of our chicken broth. Just a little bit, just to create some steam. And also this is gonna help to deglaze the bottom of our skillet as well. I'm gonna get my salt bay on, give me a little pinch of salt, just a little bit, mm -mm. boom. And the cool thing about mushrooms is that as they're shrinking up too, you know they're just soaking up all this flavor. So people that say, I don't like mushrooms, I'm like, yo man, mushrooms are like flavor bombs. They make your mouth water, it's that umami factor. More love to mushrooms this year. Now we're gonna try to create a little bit of a thick gravy here. We're gonna add in a little bit of flour. I'm gonna give this a quick toss first. Then we're gonna add in about a cup of our chicken broth. And what you'll see here, you're gonna still deglaze, but you see now the chicken broth is really cloudy and that's because it's turning into that gravy that we want. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of Dijon And just keep stirring, keep stirring. And this is looking beautiful. All right, now let's begin to bring everything together. In goes our chicken broth. Reserve some, then grab yourself the egg noodles, sprinkle those on, and then pour in the rest of that broth. And the noodles are going to absorb all of this liquid that's now like a gravy. So we're gonna bring it to a light simmer and you can see right here inside that the little light simmer going. That's just about right. And then we're gonna cover and cook this for about seven minutes. Oh my gosh, I stirred these once. Oof, they are looking good. Always check your noodles. And if you're thinking like, Kev, it's looking a little watery. What am I gonna do? Don't worry, I got you. Remember that it's gonna thicken up as it cools, but also it's gonna thicken up because we're going to add in our Greek yogurt now. Greek yogurt is really high in protein and it's really, really, really thick. And look at this. It looks like I added cheese, but I have not at all. And this is our swap for sour cream. Last bit of work, we're gonna add in our chicken. Well, you can't be here to smell it, but I'm just gonna describe it. We need that smell of vision from Willy Wonka. So I'm gonna plate it right here and finish it off with some fresh parsley. You like some other chicken? Try this chicken stroganoff. You're seeing it first here today and in today all day kitchen. I'm just gonna hit it with some fresh black pepper. Ooh, look at that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about eating. Here we go. Get a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of noodle, and then some of this succulent, lean chicken breast. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, this will make you get happy in church. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> I guarantee your friends and family are going to love this dish. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. 
you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Man, who's this? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I grew up on Staten Island, so I can't even tell you how many pasta dishes I've eaten over the years. One of my absolute favorites is penne alla vodka. So today, I'm giving that beautiful pink sauce a vegan makeover. And I'm putting a little twist on that penne too. Let's get started with the crunchy breadcrumb topping. So first, I'm gonna get a small skillet over medium low heat, and we're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. So for our breadcrumbs, we're gonna use panko breadcrumbs. I love using panko because it's extra crunchy and it's plain, so we can add anything to it and really manipulate those flavors. And the way we're gonna do that is by adding some red chili flakes because we want this spicy and a little bit of nutmeg to really round out those flavors and add that earthy component. A little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And just we're gonna cook this over medium low until it gets a nice golden brown color. So we're essentially just toasting it in the pan. This usually takes about five minutes to get nice and golden and crispy. This is a test. If it loosely moves in the pan, that means it's ready. So to start off any good sauce, you have to start off with your aromatics. We're gonna start with one medium white onion and some garlic. So we just wanna get a small dice on this. And next up, garlic. We're using about four cloves of garlic. I just like to give them a light crush to help me with the chopping process. Another great way to prep all of this is actually just blitzing it up in a food processor. Just putting it on chop and giving it a few pulses and it'll all be roughly chopped. So you wanna start off with a really large pan and get it over medium high heat. To this, we're gonna add a layer of olive oil and we're also gonna add in one tablespoon of vegan butter. Traditional vodka sauce is so indulgent and creamy so we're gonna add a few vegan options to help bring that creaminess to the sauce. So now that our oil is hot and the butter is sizzling, let's go in with our onion and garlic. You also wanna get some salt in at this point because that's gonna help the onions sweat out all of their moisture. Now, I said this was spicy vodka sauce, so now come in our spicy elements. We're gonna add some red chili flakes, but let's not stop there. We're gonna add in one of my favorite chili peppers, Calabrian chilies. And I just so happen to be wearing chili earrings to celebrate the occasion. So we wanna cook these for about five minutes until the onions are sweating and almost translucent. So now let's go in with our tomato paste. The tomato paste is gonna add basically a really concentrated tomato flavor. So it's gonna feel like we've been cooking this sauce all day, but really, we haven't been. So get this incorporated into the onions. So, the star of the show, some vodka. No, this is not a shot for me. This is for the pasta, maybe that'll be later. So once we add the vodka in, all of that alcohol is gonna evaporate, so you don't have to worry about any alcohol actually being in there, but the flavor of the vodka will become concentrated, which is what adds that unique flavor to vodka sauce, which I happen to love. We're gonna go in with some crushed tomatoes. We're gonna go in with a little sugar. Now, don't hate on this. This is really gonna help balance the flavors again. There's a lot of acidity in the tomatoes, and then we also have a lot of spice, so the sugar is gonna help round everything out. 
as well as some dried oregano. So I actually like to take this and rub it in between my fingers to get the oils in the oregano activated. We want our spicy vodka sauce to be smooth and silky. And in order to achieve that, we're gonna use an immersion blender. This looks great. Look how vibrant that is. It really is starting to look like vodka sauce. So now we're gonna add a few dairy elements to our sauce. We're gonna add a little bit of vegan creamer, as well as some vegan cream cheese. So you wanna make sure to incorporate all of that in. And you can see the color is this beautiful light orange vodka sauce color. We're gonna add in one whole sprig of fresh basil, right in and we're gonna let that simmer with the sauce. Okay, let's check in our pasta water. Oh, it's boiling. Before we do anything, we always wanna salt our pasta water. And now for our pasta. I just wanna show you guys how fun this is. So this is called a colony Pompeii. I think colony means column, and Pompeii is obviously a city in Italy. But to me, it's just a beautiful large fusilli, and it looks delicious to eat. So we're gonna get these in. This pasta is so big, it takes about 10 or 12 minutes to cook. So I'm gonna start cleaning up and get everything out of the way and get ready to plate. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Our pasta looks ready, so let's add it into our vodka sauce. Beautiful. This is so fun. Look at these swirls. And this is liquid gold. This is our starchy salted water. So we're actually gonna add a little ladle into our pasta to make it even silkier. want to make sure to gently combine this with the sauce because we don't want to break up our beautiful giant swirls of pasta. Look how fun this looks. I'm so excited to eat it, but we can't forget about our spicy, crunchy breadcrumb topping. So it's now completely cooled, so we can just use our hands to garnish it as if we were garnishing it with Parmesan. And then if we want to be extra fancy, we can add a little sprig of fresh basil. Okay, I've waited long enough, so we're now ready to dig in. I'm so excited to eat this shape. I feel like the proper way is from the bottom. Wow, I think Staten Island would be proud. This is so delicious and so fun. Look at that. Chef's kiss. This is delicious.
the overnight battered. So you see that spin right there? See it right there? All that spin? Oh, yeah. A new outbreak of destructive tornadoes as severe storms rip through the south for a third straight day. Torrential rain soaking New Orleans' famed French Quarter. The threat now marching east. Millions on alert from Florida to New York.